Mixes them up a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we're, we're already rolling, so as soon as you're, as soon as you're on, you're not on the record yet, but you're on the video. <laughs> <laughs> Just catch his that boy. We're good, nerds. Great, thank you. All right, it is six oh two. We'll call the meeting to order. Six oh two. Uh, first order. The business is uh, to receive public comment. So we'll receive public comment uh, on any items not listed on the posted agenda. And I do have two, and I'm not sure if the, your topics are on the agenda or not, but we just ask that you uh, grab the microphone. Do you want him to hold the microphone, Doug, or do you want to leave it where it sits? Yes, we can hold that. Whoever's first, you guys can, you guys can fight over it. Yeah. There you go. Hello. Can you hear me? Is it working? No. Try again. Can you hear him, Doug? Yes. We're good. Go ahead, sir. Okay. My <laughs> name is John Cook. I live at 12310 Carlsbad for more than 20 years. Um, two quick things today that my wife told me I can't have dinner until I come here. Um, did, were you all responsible for the work that was done today on the grass around Carlsbad? Yes. Number one, I was on this board for three years and there's not a lot of thank. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, it looks fantastic. And the gentlemen are sitting right there behind you, so. I am thrilled with what they did today. And I, I drive by it six times a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First class. Okay, so I'm Thanks, just sir. as a citizen here to tell you that. Now I'm going to tell you why my wife made me come here. <laughs> is the water treatment plant, which Pat knows we have been complaining about for years, and it seemed to get better for quite a while, but it has gotten bad again. And in the last month, we can't even sit on our front porch in the evening as we like to do because of the smell. It's disgusting. And, um, you know, it's not good for the neighborhood. You know the whole deal. I'm just here. My wife said, I want you to go be a voice. So you've heard my voice. And I appreciate everything that every one of you does for the neighborhood. And I know how much she's done for this neighborhood. Anyway, thank you very much. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, right. Just pass on that. Yeah. There you go. All right, Randy Bills. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to, I didn't come here to that, but he's right. I'm not the smell has been bad. And the wind's coming out of the north. It doesn't make any sense. We're on the left side of the cross, but as you drive in, and usually it's south, southeast, but it's been north. And so it must be really bad. I'm sorry. It's okay. been more than one time. Um, the other reason I'm here, I'm not. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and I mentioned it before, kind of, and got some to come in, that um, it's been an issue before, but not enough for the same thing less than last. But us and another neighbor have noticed behind us there's a trail, and there's more and more bikes. It's usually a spring thing, but at least the height of it. But there's people uh, riding bikes a lot, which is 
Okay, so that's kind of normal. But it's still against the rules. Um, in the preserve? Electric pipes. To go in, in the preserve in the dirt trail you're talking about? or? Yes, the normal preserve trails. Uh, I mean, I don't know where I'm going to go behind our house to be a trail. Sure, park. sure. And now that the electric pipes are popular, there's way more. Okay. And the electric scooters, anything the kids got for Christmas and whatever. Uh, and that's great, but that's not the place to do it. So it's a preserve, it's not a green belt. And also, occasionally, some uh, gas power pipes. I have one kid ran a gas behind our house and I helped him push it up a little field back home. Recently? Gas. That was recent. You know, and that's another thing. You know, it's just another final logic. Uh, well, how recently was that? Um, this has been, I saw a bike out there. No, I mean the I mean the motorbike because I know we have. Oh, those, that's usually in the summer, but I did see some after Christmas. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. okay. Gas power. I see some golf carts, golf uh, gas and electric out there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't. I mean, I have to drive right by a sign that says all the requirements to come out here, and it even says two hundred dollars per current supply. Mm -hmm. But people just. Well, right past it, don't be there. Yes, I don't know. Uh, and so, the way to enter the, the trail from your place is to go through like Houston's that area right there. That there's one, basin. I assume not, but there's also a trail that you made behind, kind of behind the uh, park area, the, kind of about the tennis course going towards Carpa. There's another trail that you made behind you. So, I don't know how they're doing all this, but yes, I see them go through at Houston's house. Right. Okay. In fact, they don't, you know, it's got posters. Mm -hmm. So the kids are jumping in their bikes. You know, that's, it's not mm hindering -hmm. them. But golfers are going around, and somebody's at our side. Um, and it's used, I've seen a white golf cart, a black golf cart. I've seen a bigger golf cart. So it's not just one, it's, it's, not, it's an event. Okay. Um, so that's, that's all. I just don't want, oh, the reason this comes to our mindset doesn't want another one. <laughs> I said, when we got our uh, homeowner's insurance through Will Smith's people, they noted on there they had re uh, whatever evaluated our property for being on reserve and we did because of the weather last year. They increased our homeowner's insurance because of fire hazard. We're at risk. And they said because we're on reserve with you know all this stuff. I said, well they've been cleaning like every year. Yeah. And they said, well, that's just the corporate did it, we do it by satellite or drone or whatever they're doing. And so I don't want any high risk of people going out there doing violations <coughs> electric. You we know what happens in California and so not as electric. So anyway, I just want to make mention of that. Yeah. So it's on record that you know, the president sent out a general letter to I guess the board member or the association. A few months ago, and she was addressing that. I believe she was addressing that, and we responded and had a little dialogue, but we were supposed to follow up or come to me. So it's fun. I know this has been something in the past, so I just want to bring it up. This is January. <laughs> it's, already, it's already started. Yep. It's All right. Great, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Of course. <laughs> Thank you for coming. You can go have your dinner. <laughs> uh, uh, and if your wife is needs proof that you were here, wives need proof that you were here. We're on YouTube, so the video the video's up. She should be able to see it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, anything else for that's not on the agenda? Uh, public comment on uh, line item number two is public comment on on specific agenda items. Anything to mention before we get started? So uh, we'll table two, or no comment on two. Uh, we'll move on to number three, which is to re review and approve the minutes of December fourteenth regular session. 
And I guess do we need to we need to review and approve the minutes at the next session for the one yesterday? Do you guys That's right. Okay. We'll have it for you. Okay. Does anyone have any comments or notes on the agenda? Or sorry, on the uh, yeah, I have a few that are similar to what you had. Um, point six, finance and audit committee. In the second line, it says uh, working with Mr. Swanks to generate shorter reports on the new QuickBooks system. I think we can just say generate reports. It doesn't. I don't think shorter needs to be there. Um, Where was that again? Just mentioned point, that one. Point again. six, top of page eight of the PDF pack that we have. The second line just removed the word shorter. I don't think it needs to be there. Sorry, just give her a second. Oh, yeah, I see your notes here. Shorter reports. And then Terry and I had the same one in 6A. Um, the last two paragraphs are essentially duplicated in 6D. But I think we can probably remove both the third and fourth paragraph in 6A, I believe. See those two? Yeah, they're just duplicated below. Um, that was that was all I had. Do you have one that says months, not years here too? That's not one. It says months, not years. Oh, but we're, since we're removing it, it doesn't matter. Oh, you were, it's clearer down below. It was written down oh, below, okay. so and it does say month below as well. Okay. Any any other amendments? Um, all right. Not at all. I motion we approve the minutes from. Um, the December 14th regular session. No, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on, number three. Committee uh, reports from committee matters. Uh, so facility subcommittee. Um, we'll start with the general landscape maintenance report. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, we are going into what we know as a cold spell. Um, we've been watching the weather pretty intently, um, making necessary preparations. What we're doing for the district is all of the uh, metered irrigation has been turned off in preparation for the upcoming cold. Um, and we've also turned off the controllers so that way they don't accidentally go off and spew out a little bit of water that's left in the main line. So it's our double measure, precautionary measures on that. And then we will be shutting down um, the pump and uh, the controller at the pump so that irrigation does not go off as well during this uh, event that's coming up. It's starting supposedly Sunday night going through Wednesday. Monday, we're supposed to, you know, be right at freezing. So we'll just keep watching and monitoring the weather. Um, there's no precipitation at this point, which is great. Just cold temperatures. We definitely need it. It will be beneficial to the landscape in the sense of knocking down any bugs or anything that are still out there. So we don't have a bad outcrop come springtime. Also, of course, plants to finally go into dormancy and fully push the turf into dormancy. So there is some benefits as much as I personally don't like the cold. And so we're, we're making those necessary preparations. Once that cold snap does hit on our next maintenance service, there will be a lot of plant material that we will start cutting back throughout the district from a maintenance standpoint. Um, established plant material like Turk's cap and so forth, lantanas and different things we'll start making our way around and cutting all of that material back once it is fully dormant due to this cold coming in. Um, as we had discussed previously in other meetings, different plant material that we would normally cut back, but because we planted it at the time frame that we did, we will leave it up. It will be kind of leggy and sticky throughout the winter, but we'll do that as a preventative measure for the regrowth in spring. Once the temperatures come springtime, warm up to an appropriate level, we will then cut it back and let the plant flush out as uh, 
it designed or is designed to. So, um, how long you so before you move on from that? Um, how long do you expect to have the pump off in that? Just to, is it just going to be a week or is it whole kind of season? No, we'll keep it off through this freeze event, and once temperatures get back up above freezing at night, then we will turn it back on. Okay, so not like the whole season, but just <laughs> the pump and all the meters located. All right. You never spoke about that. Seems to use winterized the pump. Yeah, yeah. 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 In the we're, we are, we did it today. He should, he should have done it today. We are unbolting everything that froze last year and letting it drain for days before the freeze gets here. So we are draining. Okay. So we, so we don't freeze anything again like we did last. Mm -hmm. So we're going to unbolt the flanges, pull stuff apart, let water drain, pull the flanges off the meter, let it drain. Uh, okay. Those kind of things that were expensive repairs that we weren't planning on. Right. So, and then once this is kind of passed, we'll tighten it all back up, reprime it, and okay. do what we need to do. Yeah, we'll pour it on that so then we can get the water back up and running when it warms up just to give it a little bit more. But then when it's consistently cold, we'll, we'll probably shut it down and a little bit more. We still like to push a little water through there. I have one question. Um, with all these high winds that we're having, and supposedly we're going to have it again tomorrow, is that causing any kind of issue in the preserve or our, our infrastructure around here? Or are we having to do anything to prep for those high winds? There's not a whole lot we can do from a landscape perspective to as far as any competitive measure for the high winds. Um, you know, obviously, if anybody notices anything that snaps and breaks and becomes a liability or a hazard, definitely let us know and we can dispatch to handle accordingly. Mm -hmm. But there's not too much preventative measure for high winds. And we haven't seen anything really um, that's caused additional work for you guys, right? Not at this moment, no. Okay. Well, that's good. Just staying on top of the training, you know, every year, that always helps. And you know, you know, breaks, you know, winter time too. So always keep punching the game. So it's less foliage for ice to accumulate on. Any other questions for um, the general landscape maintenance report before we move on? Um, any uh, the update on the Carlsbad side? Is yeah, we'll, we'll get yeah we'll get down to the projects okay. in, in just a moment. Um, if there's nothing else, we'll move on. Four uh, B is landscape services contract. I have to do any changes necessary? Anything to complain about? Okay, well table B. Um, the construction deposit rules have been drafted or they have been approved and they'll be sent out. Um, we got to a point where we were considering sending out too many communications at one time, so we'll, we'll push that off a little bit. But it's got to it's got to go out. It went in effect of January first, so got to go out pretty soon um, to let people know that there's a new rule and and uh, and whatnot. But nothing really to discuss. We we can discuss that more in communicate in, in the communications about when that communication should go out and that kind of thing. But um, anything else about? Uh, uh, 4C before we move on to 4D. So 4D is projects. So the status and the completion of uh, the projects that have been approved. So Carlsbad, we heard is great. Yep, Carlsbad has started. Um, let me backtrack a little bit. We were asked to update the uh, enhancement spreadsheet, which has been updated okay. for 2024. <laughs> and uh, um, started a new little tab for 2024. Awesome. And okay. we'll keep that updated on a monthly basis. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yep, yep. yep. Appreciate your patience on it. But it is updated. <laughs> now, if you could just get Doug to do his, then it'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so everything that was approved from last month's meeting that is taking place now is on the spreadsheet. And then anything proposed now and moving forward or in the different categories on the spreadsheet. So. 
Um, so going forward, I'll give this report. Yeah. And but tonight, can you give it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, we got started on the sod, which was the biggest portion of what was approved in last meeting. Um, the the southeast and southwest section of the Carlsbad pond. Um, there's a lot of prep work involved and sod work involved, and we are nearing completion. We thought we were going to be completed today, but caught a few hangups in the irrigation modification section of it all. And so we've got a little bit more irrigation work to do to get it all completed tomorrow. So we also got the fencing up, temporary fencing. Um, we use the orange construction fencing with T-posts because it fit best into the budget approved to stay within those constraints. Um, the different panelings and other fencing were just astronomical in price points. So okay. it looks terrible, but how long do you think it'll be up there? I mean, I mean, the landscaping looks great. The Warren Spencer looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I should get clarified. Well, it would be a little safer to get something run into it, like, more noticeable, <clears throat> you know, so it's not sure. Yeah. 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 And, you know, uh, when we were out there walk, doing the walkthrough, I wasn't really thinking that you'd have to run by the Hieronymus house and behind the behind the mailbox and all that stuff, too. But, yeah, I noticed that it's... Um, that uh, that was necessary to you, right? To keep to block off that. Yeah, and then I'm like it loop, so it's kind of a gate for the, the drive. The oh, there is a gate? Like yeah, you could get through? Yeah, you kind of just have a loop in. So okay. if you section it off on the left, it, this is a little, so you can open it. So okay. they can get down there if they needed to access it. Without yeah, that well, that's, <laughs> does that defeat the purpose of what we? <laughs> I mean, we, we want it open. The, the, the HOA has a, a, a doggy station on the other side of there. I noticed we, oh, yeah. we had to roof that in. But. Yeah, we, we went around the trash pit on the, the uh, sidewalk side, uh, so I think we still use that. So. Oh, you did? Oh, so you changed it a little bit since I was out there. Yeah, just a little on the, where the, the bridge is. So oh, right, 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 right. Closer to the pond. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, we still have a few pallets coming in next week to fish out tomorrow. Oh, okay. Okay. So Gary, who takes care of the dogging station? Who makes sure it's not HOA? I'm sorry? I'm sorry? You do? You personally do? No. <laughs> they have a porter that does that. issue with not being able to water that side that we just put in once the pumps are off? That one's on the city meter and so we just water it in real good and we'll water it in uh, tomorrow. So we are able to get water? Yeah, now I'm going to turn it off. Okay. And it's, you know, temperatures back up about turn. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I guess the same question for all. That, that that question came to mind too, but for all the new landscaping that we've done, you're obviously taking those into consideration the other places, right? Right. Where, de where we definitely need to water. Right. Okay. Uh, tree lift? Did you do tree lift at Carlsbad? We have not done that yet. Um, we are in the middle of another project right now that's got that crew tied up. Um, Quite a few very unfortunate large red oaks that are being removed. So as soon as that project is done, we will move over to Carlsbad. And then we have the plant material for Carlsbad. It is in. Um, we were going to finish this up and move into the plant material next. But we're going to delay the plant material until after this freeze event is over. Um, so 
if it's over on Wednesday, as they're predicting, then we'll get started on the plant uh, prep and everything, creating the beds and moving the rock and installing the edging um, on Wednesday next week, and then move into the plants on Thursday next week. If the weather event delays a little bit, we'll just delay the, you know, the work in conjunction with the weather. Okay. So that's, that's uh, two of the four approved that are underway and plans to start, get the other two underway next week and finish these two, I guess. Correct. Right. So the trees should be done before the end of January? Absolutely. Just because we asked presidents not to do stuff in February because of Oak Wilt and all that? Yeah, no, it, it will be done. Okay. Yeah. And the majority of the trees over there are bald cypresses. So I know just the residents see us doing stuff with trees in February and are ask more questions. Yeah, that makes sense. Is that what it is, February 1st or is it March? I think it's February 1st, right? We'll about switch that. Off. Yeah, January to July. Or, yeah, January to July or July to January. February 1st on trees, March 1st on birds. Yeah, okay. That rings a uh, bell. You told us that already. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, anything else about the existing or the project status? We have a few new proposals that I point out to the board that were in your board packet to take a re review. Uh, I'm going to recommend both of them. Um, we'll, we'll address them one at a time, just in case there's any directors that had any um, disagreement. So we won't lump them together. Uh, the first one's titled, it is on page 12 of the board packet. It's, it's titled, uh, BK's Wall Enclaves Mulch. Um, looks like we're getting some free mulch. Yep. Yeah. 15 cubic yards of free mulch, and now we're paying for labor. Uh, and and uh, yeah, paying for labor, right? So I move, I motion that we approve the uh, the LRI proposal titled BK's Wall en uh, Enclaves Mulch in the total of $3,380. I can second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Get that one underway. Now, I see you have a, uh, this is a bit of a joke, a, a meal in here that says we eat and scalp. We eat and scalp. Yeah. That's uh, just one of the areas that I have still have. No, it was, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> he prefaced it by saying this is a bit of a joke. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a second proposal entitled um carlsbad sod southeast mailbox so this is the other side of the carlsbad um other side of the trail behind the mailbox that goes to the east side of carlsbad and it is very similar in nature um i don't see any differences between this and what we've approved and what we've just talked about being installed other than this place other than the placement of it right it's all gonna obviously it's all gonna be consistent. You're doing roughly the same thing here as you did the rest of the hill all the way around. Correct. Okay. Any questions about that before we make a motion? My only question on this one is there's no irrigation in that area yet. Correct. Then that's the fundamental difference between what we are doing currently in this one. And the reason we didn't bring it forth last meeting was there's some due diligence that I still needed to to do on that area. Um so there, yes, there's no irrigation in that strip there from the mailboxes down. Um, so it, it's, um, it's a reconfiguration of irrigation out there to keep it's it. It's not like it's 2,000 square feet. It's not <coughs> that big from what I could. It's not that big. It's 2,000 square feet, right? Correct. And it fits with everything else we're doing? Is that the logic? Generally, we're not adding irrigation, though. We're just sort of maintaining what we have. I believe, right, for the rest of the district. We're not really adding new new areas of irrigation, like expanding it. Correct. No, elsewhere, no. Like other places? Okay. Well, it's just like a zone that you're making a bigger zone. Basically, yes. Okay. That was all I had a question will, on. Sure. Will you all be uh, fertilizing the grass? Animals? Correct. Yes. So is it legal? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah our lights. Okay. Take a look at it. Make sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I motion that we approve the, awesome. the sorry, one, one second. I motion that we approve the Carlsbad Sod Southeast mailbox uh, proposal in for the total of $9,255. I can second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. I, I want to pay for these out of subdivision improvements. I believe so, yeah. Okay. Hello. Um, if you if you wish to speak, then if there's a form over there, if you wouldn't mind filling it out, so we have your name and for the record. So if there's nothing further about 4D, um, have, I'm sorry, 4D2, then we can move on to 4D3. So much. I do have some stuff. Uh, okay. Do set our engineer for our stormwater uh, ponds and permits. Mm -hmm. uh, did an inspection and uh, and sent me a uh, all our reports for the year. And we do need to do some cleanup, and I want to address this with y'all so maybe y'all can look at this and either do it through the winter since we're not having to mow or if y'all need to charge us for some of it get a, a bid on it uh Brittany points just clean up some of the dirt on the outfall uh, just a reminder for y'all when you have the crews go through to shovel out the concrete basins that run through some of the ponds uh, and then the biggest one. Wait, shuffle them out like on a one-time uh, basis, or you want you well, want to make sure they, they blow should be, it out? Keep stay, every time they mow, they should blow them. Blow it out. Yeah. And then when dirt fills in from rains, just get a shovel, scoop them out, so the water will keep flowing. Now, is that something that you expect them yes. to do? Or is that yeah, something? we've kind of discussed it, and it's just it's kind of built up on it. So, uh, but the most one in particular, or all, uh, of, them? all of them, all of them. So. Uh, but the one thing, and y'all might have to just give us a bid on, is the outfalls on all of our ponds. Trees are starting to grow up in the rocks and in the drainage basins, uh, cleaning those out. And the worst one is Carlsbad, uh, where y'all just cleaned all the spillway stuff out. Mm -hmm. That little catch basin in the bottom, there's a bunch of trees and grasses and weeds, and we need to clean all that out. Oh, I thought that was on the proposal that we approved last month. Y'all did the, the upper part on the dam. They didn't do down in the basin. Oh, okay. So, but if y'all want to look at that and it give me a price for getting that cleaned up, just past the gabions, right. yeah. Five feet. And then look at the Lions Club outfall and Brittany Point. Okay, anything and else? That was it. Okay. I've got one little blip. I don't know if it's related to this, but it's you and I talked about that um, that twenty-five or twenty-foot piece of PVC okay. that's about this big. Could they haul that away? Yeah. Um, Would you mind? Uh, so let's go back. Let's go back to uh, uh, two uh, four D two, and I had something else to add there too. So we'll open four D two back up proposals. So you want a proposal, or is it a simple simple job? It's a simple thing. You just take a handsaw or something and just cut that pipe up and haul it off. Next time y'all Just right over here. Where is it? Uh, right back here. If you go over the hill okay. and on yeah. the right where we cleaned up all the pond cleanup, there's a piece of pipe laying up in the trees that's yeah. left over from the construction. Oh. It's PVC. Okay. Yeah. Just cut it up into some sections and haul it off. Thank you. So mine is a similar area too. So can we get a proposal on uh, fixing up that trail back there? So it sounds like it's a very similar area. So that trail was done by Boy Scout some time ago. It's washed out. We put a berm there to make sure that it didn't continue to wash out, but we never repaired it. I think what, what all, the extent of what we did is remove some edging that was in there, and did we store that or get rid of it? I stored it over at the pond. 
Yeah, so it's still stored. Yeah. Um, in fact, they could probably use they it if they try it. to get. If, if you uh, if you uh, can you get us a proposal on that? Sure. Are you able to tell them exactly how much or? Uh, no, we'll have to go look at it. Yeah, we'd want, would like to reuse the edging if we could. That's why we saved it. Okay. Um, so maybe maybe include that in the proposal that would be reusing the edging, but we'll take that during the next month. Yeah, we'll take a look at the trail and the edging and put something together. Okay. Are you and going to regrade some of it so then just wash down? That's where a lot of the water hits the edging. You can just kind of. Like well, yeah, and I think the berm we put the, we installed the berm there to keep that from happening to make the water flow down farther and not hit the trail as it's flown down into the pond. Well, one of the fingers crossed. We'll, we'll, just, we'll look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you might have to go like 90 off the stairs there, right? So it didn't over so much. Okay. Yeah. Right. With rain, yeah. Because mm -hmm. the edging kind of keeps it in and it just goes around the curves. Okay. Yeah. So um, we'll take a proposal and your recommendation on that. And, uh, um, and we'll chalk it up to another Boy Scout project that got abandoned, and now we now we have to spend money on it. <laughs> um, okay. Anything else? Any other uh, parts of the neighborhood that anyone has noticed is particularly bad? We've been taking their recommendations for the last couple of months, and they've been bringing great recommendations. Mm -hmm. uh, but is there any places that you y'all noticed that um, that you'd like to focus? I know there was some concern about us focusing on one area and leaving other areas, and so we're kind of trying to move it around the neighborhood. And so, you know, Carlsbad was this this past month or this month, and up here was uh, on the month before or whatever the case is. Is there any places that are you'd like to request a proposal? I don't think so. No. Okay. We'll just continue to work through the facility subcommittee then. And, and they're, they're free to feed it to me whenever they want, and I can ask you to also do a proposal through during the month. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So 4D2 will close once more. Um, anything further for landscape resources at all? Okay. That's good work. I like it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate it. Nice. Thanks for doing my spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll move on to uh, out uh, the outreach subcommittee. Um, so we'll look for, uh, I'll give, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the um, WTCPUA. Um, and our communications with them. So, um, so as we all learned um, and probably have experienced ourselves, there's there was a, a problem at the wastewater treatment plant. It was it happened started happening before Christmas. Um, it took until until yesterday um, or two days ago uh, to for them to to at least put a bandaid on the problem. Um, and we don't, we're not certain if it's, if it's controlled the, the odor problem or not, but it is, um, it's a concern we're working with. Not only our PUA representative is involved, but also with, uh, obviously with Jennifer and her, and her, um, operations crew. Um, and there's, there's, there's a little bit of legal aspect as well, um, because of the uh, TCEQ permit, which we probably need to ask about that in an executive session learn a little bit more about that but um, the uh, other thing to mention is so uh, was there any comments or anything before I move on from that line item um, so can we get the, the, the distance yeah, to my just place. if you wouldn't mind and make sure it's just turned hello <laughs> can you Good. hear me she's got he's got you. yep thank you um, so um, yes I'm a resident here at 3208 Santi um, my name is Amanda Foote and I rent a property practically next door to the water work uh, facility. Um, I'm sort of prompted to come along here today through complete exasperation of the situation. Generally, we just live our lives and get on with things and never the twain show me, you know, you'd never see me. However, at the start of, um, I think it was around about the 8th of December, um, I don't know who the water work people are here, I'm sorry. But um, uh, none of us are with. Oh, none of you guys, right? Okay, so <laughs> I um, contacted Jennifer, and uh, you know, subsequently contacted Pat as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. and I've had some dialogue going back and forth from from Jennifer and the the water plant people, um, 
I mean, it's been horrendous. Um, they say that you can't smell anything in the house. Unfortunately, we can. We weren't able to use our um, our yard, our garden, all the way through from the 9th of December until about two or three nights ago. It, it was just atrocious. Um, and it's, you know, affecting how we live, essentially. Um, so I just wanted it to go on record that I really feel that from sort of like the 8th of December till now to only be putting a Band-Aid on it two nights ago is completely unacceptable. Um, I understand that there was a broken part. I understand that they did what they could to, to try and fix that, apparently. But I think they need to be looking at their policies and their practices that are in place to ensure that this doesn't happen again or they fix it for real. Um, because whilst they were at home with their families having a nice Christmas, I was at home here unable to invite people around because of the smell. And, you know, uh, when I say smell, it was it was utterly appalling. Um, two nights ago when we walked the dog, I believe this new piece of equipment had gone in two nights ago but you could still smell it at the play park, right. you know? So we're, we're all getting affected by it, you know? And, and the, I, I mean, I'm kind of lost for words. I don't want to be a whinging, you know, Brit here telling you how bad things are. Until the 8th of December, we had smelt it from time to time, but you know, it, it came and it went, you know? So it was a 24 mm -hmm. hours, then it's gone, seven hours, then it's gone. But to have that established smell day after day after day after day for the last God knows how long. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to have it on record that I feel someone needs to hold their feet to the fire with regards to their policies. Are they adhering to those? You know, when something is broken, <coughs> what is the policy to fix it? You know, I, I, I've got empathy in terms of them trying to do it, but I want to have some, you know, concrete guarantees that this this isn't going to go on um and i'm here actually representing 328 santi as the whole close actually i know my landlord's been here today to speak to the hoa as well it's um we're all frustrated by it and want to know w okay. when it's going to be fixed please mm -hmm. permanently okay. um so that's me all right thank you you're welcome can, can i can i do a follow-up question real quick is that permitted Okay, so first off, how long have you lived in that home on Santee? Uh, a year. A year? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and how often do you um, smell that odor? So we have it from time to time. You know, I think before the road was fixed, the mm -hmm. so much, we, we, you know, you, all, you get it, but it's not ever a persistent smell that lasts the whole day. Um, were, were there certain times of days when the smell was more likely to drift over to you? Okay. And I kind of get a suspicion that more in the night time when they've gone from work, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what's happening. The trucks tend to come more during the week and then at the weekend. Um, but honestly, it's been absolutely persistent okay. um, since the 8th of December, and it's been, it's been horrible, actually, living here. I've never experienced it in my life, you know, it's, um, and I feel like, I mean, I've had to copy all in, and the emails that have gone back and forth, I've, I've asked them about their policies, they, you know, they want to swear at those, uh, those responses. They tell me that the floor's coming in to get fixed, they put something in temporarily to fix it. But, you know, I don't know, I, I just don't know how, how they can say this, you know, four or five weeks on and still there's no permanent fix to it. I don't know what you all think about it, whether your local homes are close by, but you're affected by it. Um, but it certainly seems just kind of like a ring of homes that from time to time will be affected depending on how they're deploying. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I am exasperated <laughs> in a nice way. Um, but I, I would be super grateful if you all could add some weight to the issue, you know, and try and help us. We've done our best, I've done my best to try and negotiate the issue independently and not make a big 
drama out of it, but um, so I'm here tonight to plead with you guys to see if you could add some weight to it and help me really. Okay. Um, I'm so grateful for that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so the um, we obviously we don't have a that was a that was five A. So we've been talking to them on five A one, right? To Jennifer and all that about the spell. Yes, we've been involved in the conversation. Yeah, we and sent them anything formal in writing, like a formal complaint. Emails. Um, no, but like a formal legal, like a legal book. legal letter, CCTC UQ, and escalate this a little bit to get this resolved. Thirty days of not being able to live in your house right. is not acceptable. Right. That that's um, beyond the scope of <clears throat> anything. So, we probably do have that type of avenue of approach. Um, our our representative probably is. Perhaps another or even better avenue, if we. I think we need something formal. Mm -hmm. I would agree. There's got to be something formal in writing. From the mud. From the mud, raising the complaints, the length of time, because we've been the impact on homeowners. Time, right? Like, and and we are a co-owner, so it's like basically they work for us. Would that be fair? Yeah, I don't think the relationship is co-ownership. The well, relationship we're co we're founder, co-founder, co-founder. That's we don't have control over what they do. That's not the, that's not the nature TC, of our relationship. Yeah. And TCEQ, that they regulates them. Now, I don't know that we CC them on them, but I think we threaten to CC them on the letter. Well, they've, all, they've TCEQ's been in contact with, uh, there's been residents in, in contact with the TCEQ as well. <clears throat> yeah, briefly. Um, <clears throat> we had this issue before several years ago, and we uh, with the love uh, the previous well, the, you know, it's a different management team. Right? Sorry, one Sorry. second, Doug. Can you, and, um, you good? No, oh, we need you to pick up the microphone, please. Oh, sorry. So, uh, uh, anyway, we wound up suing them, and we won. They were trying to re, re uh, renew their permit, and we protested it, and we won much later. But in the meanwhile, it wound up that we got a negotiation going and they agreed to the stuff that, that um, Kelly had found. Because what we did at the time, we had all these residents contact TCQ and, and the um, PUA was, was also um, logging complaints. And that was a huge thing for us because we wound up having like a thousand complaints within a certain time. And then the resolution that they'd say was like, oh, well, the tech went out there and they couldn't find anything. They didn't smell anything. It was like, really? A thousand times? And so that really helped our case. So um, I think we really would like something formal again, and, and the HOA would be happy to participate because this affects you know, all of our property values and, and residents. And um, I plan to talk to the HOA at the meeting that we have next week about um, I want to set up a, uh, a, a, I have several people who are volunteering to help and we're going to go door to door to all the streets around the plant and, and document that this went on from December 8th until, you know, January 8th and that really there wasn't any communication that was meaningful and that, um, right. that this really was a, you know, was, as you heard from Amanda, this was a real hardship for the people that live there. So that we've got some numbers and some documentation, and I think that should be reported to TCEQ as well. And it's not that we want to. Um, I think Jennifer's doing a good job, but I think we need to. And y'all have the, you know, the you are a governmental entity, which the HOA is not. So I think, and you have the the rep on the on the PUA board. But I think it would be great if we could somehow let them know that they need to pay a lot more attention to this. And if they're not gonna shut down a plan anytime soon, they need to invest in it so that we don't have anything like this happen again. So thank you. Yeah, I see it as a multi-pronged approach. I mean, we could, we could, they could petition the TCEQ, um, we could support that. We could uh, work through our representative, we could support that. We could have residents show up at the PUA meetings and complain just like, just as you are here. Um, you know, a, likely a subset of the people that you gather information from um, anybody that's available to go and, and land weight support behind that we can also continue to work with jennifer and operations and, and try to uh, 
this kind of soft-handed approach of, you know, we're, we're good partners with you. We've been done this for a while. And as we mentioned, we're founders of the, the WTCPUA, our co-founders. And, you know, this is probably a, a, I don't think it's one answer. I think it's a concerted effort to, to kind of attack it from five different angles. So oh. Decommission. But I'm, I'm with Jody, though. I mean, we've, we've been soft shooting it a bit, too, and, and hearing complaints and issues. So, well, I, I think that. And well, I think we can continue to work with Jennifer and be friendly, yeah. but I do think we have to file a, like a formal complaint. Mm -hmm. We can have Carlton draft it up, logging sort of a month of people not being able to use their yards. Like, there's no scope that they cannot have redundancy and backup parts that it takes 30 days to fix something of that nature. There's no way TCEQ would sign off on that. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying, is it within the MUD's purview? That's my question. Is it within our, it, was it, is it, is it within our wheelhouse and our responsibility to do that? We could obviously go do that without it being, right? We'd go outside of our purview and, and do that. We could partner with the HOA, which is more of a, the, the association of those homeowners, right? We don't provide service other than the landscaping and lawn care of for for the neighborhood. No, I'm I'm, not I'm, I'm 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 just of the opinion that every time we have this type of scope creep where people are pleading, yes, I, I completely understand. I live on Carlsbad, <laughs> so I smell it as well, right? So you're not alone. Well, in your opinion, it's us. Not necessarily us. It doesn't. That doesn't fall within the purview of our. our we don't control the PUA. Yes, but our 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 powers in that are limited. Well, that I'm sorry, but that that doesn't prove that it's in, within the mud's purview. That the mud has always been involved. We have found that there's a lot of things that have been going on with mud for a long time that aren't necessarily the, the correct way of doing things. We can ask for legal advice in an executive session. Yeah. But I mean, I, I can't, I can't disagree with anything you're saying. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously an affected homeowner as well. Um, I think you've got some good ideas there. I think, I think understanding what our role is and to find that out in executive session and to the extent that we participate in that, in that pushback. Okay. So um, and we're not prepared to go into executive session right now, but when we come back out of executive session, then we'll, the, we may have some motions and some actions that, to take okay. once we discuss and decide that. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so uh, more specifically, 5A1, um, the uh, receive an update from the WTCPUA representative. So I'll, I'll deliver an update. And I think that I've delivered it to this, to this group already uh, over email, but essentially WTCPUA representative Jason Bethke, um, is his term is up in April. Um, he is a, um, willing to stay on for a transition if it takes longer than that, but would prefer not to, not to be uh, reappointed in April if, if we can find a replacement for him. So um, we've had a little discussion, but we haven't come up with any any um, any firm, concrete plans for for that replacement. I wonder if um, 
Is that something that we can speak to you about now, about the process behind replacement of that? Do you, are you familiar with it at all? Yeah, I have your representative on the, on the WTC PUA board. board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you'll have to go through the process to appoint someone if once, once his term is over. Um, if you want to use a formal process, kind of like you have for, for any vacancies on your board, you can do that. It doesn't have to be that formal. Um, you know, if, if Jason um, fulfills his term, then you want to look at that April meeting, um, probably want to get the word out to see who, who might be the most appropriate person to serve in that capacity mm -hmm. between now and then, if you have somebody who um, would and be willing to do that. Are um, there any qualifications that, like, does the WTC PUA get to reject someone because they're not qualified? Is there certain... I haven't criteria. seen anything that gives them any specific criteria for membership on or you know for participation on the board. Is this for a family member that can't be participate? Do you think that one family member who's not qualified would be happy to check the other and the other and then we and then the other two members just trying to see if they can be satisfied? Right, right. Yep. Yep. You have the sole authority to pick who your person is. Okay, so it's a matter of us finding yes. who we think is qualified. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so if we were kind of outlining the process in my mind is that we would we would put together a short list. We would get a communication out to the neighborhood. Um, Speaking of too many communications. Uh, yeah, exactly. But I think we should send it out and ask for it. But before we can do that, we need to really write down the what kind of qualifications or what kind of experience we're looking for. Um, also, the roles and responsibilities, what kind of time commitment it's going to be, um, and that kind of thing. Um, and we have kind of just uh, amongst the committee, we've kind of discussed um, different avenues for collecting and kind of collaborating on that type of a, a whether it's a document or a series of documents or whatever the case is. Um, starting by going to uh, PUA legal and understanding what the what you know what requirements they have. For, for appointing somebody. It can't just be someone without any experience and whatever. I mean, I'm sure it could be, but we would, wouldn't want that. It would probably be interesting to get like Jennifer's feedback on the amount of time she expects versus Jason's feedback on the amount of time she puts in. Jennifer Records? Yeah. Jennifer's oh, well. Um, like from the WTCP UA board, what they would sort of expect, the right. normal amount of time commitment, number of meetings, all that sort of general stuff. Yeah. And then get the same information from Jason separately, but see how much it aligns. <clears throat> sure, yeah. Hopefully it aligns closely. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I, I don't think it, stop, it doesn't stop there with Jennifer either. Um, their their um, legal is very involved with the, the you know, the board meetings and, and that. We can, we can ask questions of them. We can also reach out to the other directors on the board and understand the role of the Lake Point, you know, how the role of the Lake Point position has been um, you know, maintained and filled, um, but then it's but then it's uh, uh, publicizing that or getting that out in communication, and maybe it you know maybe that's too much information for communication. But we can provide a link to the website and, and throw that stuff up on a web page in a couple of different you know FAQ kind of page about the representation. But I would say we work towards that and then ready, be ready to appoint somebody as soon as Jason's term is up, be April. So in short you have, order, you have to select someone in March, right? Right. So or you would think you need to April. appoint somebody at the March meeting yeah. for them to, and, and with the with the understanding that they would be in place on April, say April 1st okay. or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. So it's not pretty short runway. Uh, similar to when we talk about, mm -hmm. you know, representative around here. So um, So do we have a plan, I guess, to get the communication out before the next board meeting? Like, do we need to approve or authorize anything as far as collecting the information, putting it together, and sending it? I out? don't think we need any approvals. The com comm committee can can approve messages going out, so we don't really need to okay. put that in front of the board. Well, yeah, as long as we do, we, do we need to have like a general um, board vote to to allow the comm subcommittee to distribute? This type of information when we gather it, or is it? Are we just we're kind of free to do that, right? 
you're, you're free to do that. That's part of uh, within your roles and responsibilities for your subcommittee. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't. It probably wouldn't hurt to get a little blurb in your. If you guys are going to continue the two week newsletters, it wouldn't wouldn't hurt to get a little blurb in there. But we. De it's definitely a lot more information that we want to pump into a newsletter, or I would think probably even an email. To the group that, or to the uh, all of the our, our distribution list, it's probably too much information. So um, maybe uh, maybe we would send out like a one paragraph information from our our comms link to the website and a link to a lot more information so people can. Oh, I'm interested in that. Click on it, right? If not, you know, you're going to have 943 homes that are not interested, and in <laughs> maybe one that is. So. Yeah, so that the so what she's re referencing is that that really our our, our representative can be appointed. It, it, the person just has to live in Travis County, um, not Western Travis County, not B Cave, not not or sorry, not Lake Point, just Travis County. I so, think legally that's the only requirement. Is it? I mean, maybe something like have to be a voter or something, but I don't think there's any. It, it, I don't think there's any particular requirement for professional qualifications or educational qualifications right. or anything. Yeah. So. But from but, but for from a non, for a non-paid position. Right. Well, we don't know actually. We have to we have to connect with legal and, and understand if it's non-paid or not. It may have director's fees the okay. same. Fair enough. Very similar so to it's us. Probably a per diem. What's yeah. that? Probably a minimal per diem or something. Yeah, with them, but that's the kind of information we need to put out, right? That's yeah. that's what we need to collect and put out. You're exactly right. And yes, it is a non-paid position, and or sorry, it is a it is a um, an appointment, and there's expectations for the the hours that they can be available as well. And so, you know, but I don't know that we. So my preference, I guess, would be that we appoint somebody that's a Lake Point resident. But if that's not possible, then 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 we may need to have to look at some other avenues to get the word out to the rest of Travis County. Yeah. But I think let's probably let's probably back burner that conversation just simply because we have a lot of work to do before we get there. But that so. does raise a point, though. That, you know, this <coughs> this facility is utilized by more than just Lake Point. What other what other uh, neighborhoods are do use this this uh, wastewater plant that we keep talking about? I mean, it's more uh, than just Lake Point, right? Well, but well, why? What, what's the reason? For because your question? if I would think that um, you might find a volunteer out of ABC neighborhood that whose neighborhood utilizes that wastewater treatment plant. Yeah, I don't know. The flow has changed significantly over the last number of years, so I'm not I'm not certain that we get wastewater from any other neighborhoods besides Lake Point at our Lake Point water wastewater treatment okay. plant. At one point, uh, I think when it was first built, they were flowing sewage or or wastewater down from HEB and from. Well, we can learn about that, but I think they've redirected a lot of that since Bowles came online. So I, I don't have clear word on whether whether we're still doing that or not from the PUA. But WTC PUA is also like raw water, drinking water supplies, like Thomas <coughs> County, drove thing, like it's a huge mm -hmm. area. Yeah. And a lot of the water comes out of the pipe on the bottom of the hill. Right. Two pipes. Two pipes. Oh, that's two probably pipes. soon to be three or four. Wonderful. Okay, um, so yeah, so we de we definitely have some work to do there. Um, the outreach subcommittee will take that on. Um, and we actually skipped down to five A three. Yeah, we skipped down to five A three. I'm sorry. I, I guess we can table five A one and five A two, and we skipped straight to five A three. I didn't realize we had called it out specifically, but. Good. Okay, anything anything further about from the WT or about the WTCP way? Before we move on. Okay, Lake Point Homeowners Association 5B. So we'll receive the update or uh, any kind of update from the representative. Would you mind just grabbing the microphone? Um, let's see, well, we finally got our pool leaks fixed <clears throat> last week after a 
year and a half. And uh, they supposedly, they're guaranteeing it for a year. And they say that they have fixed it, so we'll see. Um, we're looking at bids to approve, hopefully at our next meeting next week. Our, our next meeting is gonna be on the 17th because MLK Day is on Monday. So uh, a lot of people aren't gonna be available. So it'll be next Wednesday at um, six o'clock here. And um, we're gonna try to get finalized the storage shed out here where the garbage cans are now. And also we're looking at a bid to fix the drainage behind the, uh, where it runs off down here, right behind the door that goes out to the pool. We've had flooding coming in when it rains and um, the French drain that was there is no longer effective, so that's been a problem. Um, I think I told you last month, last month, I don't, actually I think it was after that, we um, approved the new playscape replacement and at the park and all the other the swings and all that kind of stuff and that's on, on order. So when that comes in, we'll be working with um, LRI to try to mitigate the least amount of uh, destruction to the to the grasses and all that kind of stuff. When they are you them. changing the surface as well, or are you staying with the uh, the ground up wood? No, we're that's not. So you want, that, that's go not through. within the regulation, so we're going to get rid of that. That's okay. all going to go to that spongy material. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's still going to be mulch, but it's going to be kitty mulch. The stuff that was ground up is not not the right. It's, it's too okay, big. got it. So it's uh, it's not to code. So we'll be, but we are going to stick with the kitty mulch, not the sponge stuff. And um, so we are still interested in talking to you all at some point about maybe seeing if we could put a pickleball court here on this little property right behind the parking lot, which I think we own part of that when I looked at the, um, at the plat. Behind the parking lot? Right, Just right, right there. Right in the parking lot, where they get the construction uh, Construction stuff, yeah. Because there's, there's a couple of spots, if we don't go over where the pipe is, you know, there, there's a couple of fairly flat spots, because we don't have enough room in that park for that, or we don't have any place for kids to play on the grass at all if we do that. Um, so that seemed to be another logical potential place maybe that we could, you know, could talk about that and see if that makes sense to, and people could drive here and or walk or whatever, and it would be sort of out of sight from people that aren't in the neighborhood. Um, so that's another thing that we like to, to look into. Um, <clears throat> and then of course the Versaco wall, and I, I'm sorry, I was unaware that there was a meeting on Tuesday, so I was not able to attend. And um, I understand that you all discussed your, your uh, what, whether you wanted to participate in in helping us with replacing the Rasaka fence. Mm -hmm. And did. did you did you have a vote on it? No, we we weren't allowed to have a vote. It was a workshop. Oh, uh, okay. So are you going to have a vote tonight? Um, I don't think that there's any reason for a vote. Uh, we were uh, for the reasons that we talked about earlier. Um, we're, we're, we we cannot participate in in your in your in you funding the fence in the manner that you the HOA has gone about it. Okay, and um, so I, I, so I you know a, a vote would be. Do we want to stick well, to the original contract? Are we, on this, are we on that point yet? Are we still? Yeah, we are talking about the fence. Yeah, let's move on. So the fence project because is. Because I had one question on the, on fence the pool project is under before her. Before we do that, the pool first. Okay. On the pool, yeah. Oh, the, the little shower spigot little thing. Is that going to be fixed? You know, or is that just going to be plugged? It's going to be plugged. It's it's uh, not enough people use it, and it leaks. And there's a it's going to cost us a lot of money to maintain, and we're not going to use it anymore. It, what didn't used to be there that used to just be a where the seating is. It used to just be a pond. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the HOA board voted that they don't want to have that ongoing maintenance with the uh, stuff. So no, we won't fix it. Any, any other things y'all looking doing to? Uh, around here besides the pool maintenance before we move on just curious more than anything else any uh, upgrades to the pool any changes or just or, just the, or the equipment's we're, roof um we're looking at um at maybe redoing the surface area because a lot of the rebars come out but that's going to be a big deal and i don't know if we have enough time before a uh, swim team starts to be able mm -hmm. to do something like that because the pool's closed right now and i'm not sure we can get that done um, but if we don't do it this year we'll probably put it in the works for next year 
And but besides the adding the uh, addition on here for the storage of all this stuff, and then fixing the, the drain outside, we don't really have any other thing here uh, that we're we're working on. Uh, the deck, right? There was you mentioned last month that that the, we, you were looking at replacing the deck out here. The deck. Yeah, the the wooden deck out here, no, replacing no, or repairing. The deck's fine. We're, uh, we just had it restained and fixed and stuff this past summer. So the oh. Deck's fine. I was say. All right. Okay. So anything for what? Any well. So I, can we discuss the the, the south wall? So. Sure. Uh, we can move on to three uh, five B two. So um, we have three vendors, like I told you last month, that have given us bids to replace the fence, and the cost would be approximately a little less than four hundred thousand dollars. And right now we own the fence, and if we replace it in kind, like we were thinking about, well, improving it with um, uh, with certain features, like you know metal posts and things. If we replace it in kind, we don't have any trouble with Travis County. Um, and I understand that you all are thinking about trying to pursue having a, um, a masonry wall like we had thought about and then nothing, you know, it turned out to be astronomically expensive. But the surveys, I just want to let you know that the surveys that um, were done at the time by the engineering company, Jones Carter, showed that several of the properties are not, are on county property. They're not on their Yeah, we got property. easements from the county. That's Sorry, right we already have easements from the Travis County. You do have that, okay. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to let you know. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about if you pursue um, going after the uh, masonry fence, what the timeline would be and what the process would be for that? Because I'll need to take some of this stuff back to our board. Yep. So we, when we sat down on Tuesday, I'll speak generally, and the other directors can jump in. Um, we went through the agreement and we started to sort of look at the spirit of the agreement and it, it's pretty clear the entire sort of premise was to build this stone wall and i think that's what the community has been maybe expecting and been told for years and years and years so our thought is before we go down the road in a different direction we should really make a a final full court press to see if the community wants this wall or not now the costs have escalated quite a bit, as we know. So what we would, what we are, and this is very tentative, um, looking toward doing would be engaging someone like a Jones Carter, getting the quotes, getting the numbers, and putting this on the election for an, an election item in November, where the residents of Lake Point could vote on whether they want to approve us taking out debt to build a wall down Rusaka and Sonoma. And then we would, for once and for all, have resolution on the stone wall, and yay or nay. Would it just be Rosaka? No, both. And what about, there's also a wall over here that's part of the boundary wall now. Um, you haven't said it. We, yeah, we have to look at it all. We haven't gotten that far yet. I, I know what you're talking about, but we haven't gotten that far yet. But yeah, the, the, the idea would be to have the neighborhood cohesive, like, so it flows. And it would be, it would be a rather large investment, obviously. Um, but if you think about MUD 5, where the old debt rolled off, the new debt would, and we haven't run numbers, but would probably replace what rolled off, so they wouldn't even really notice the difference in their taxes. So you know, no, no, we got to get prices on the fence, and then we got to figure out everything else. So we have a lot to do and a short time to do it, but in a perfect world, we would have um, a good and accurate estimate to put a bond number into an election in November. So the residents would know what we would finance. Then we'd have to go back to the drawing board and see what we're going to do after that. So it'd probably be something like a replacement fence, I guess, would be the next option. But <laughs> like I've lived here three years, and I know there's been a lot of talk in the stone wall. Um, it started, and it fell apart, not because of anyone in the neighborhood's lack of desire to get it done. The contractor pulled out, basically, at the last second. So it wasn't. It wasn't anything in the spirit of anyone not wanting to get it done. And the finances were there, everything was set up. And unfortunately, the contractor pulled out. Well, and, and I know that we might have spent about $160,000 to 
on the agenda Carter. And have you all, did you get the um, surveys and all the other stuff out? You actually got those documents from them? Yeah, we got everything in. So Robert did, and then we have them all in here now. So they did send them all to go yes. to do that. Nope. And we would consider whether or not we should re-engage them too. There may be a lot of efficiencies to doing that, but maybe they're not the best candidate. Yeah, we haven't got that far, but there would be some options. So our thought is, I just uh, I've heard from everyone that this stone wall is an important aspect that could benefit everyone in the neighborhood, appreciate all the homes in the neighborhood, but it's a pretty massive undertaking. So what we came out with sort of as a tentative plan is let's let's go down the road, let's get some pricing, let's get some bids. And let's let the neighborhood decide what they want to do. And do you think you get good interest Not as good, but we're also we're in a good spot now where we have no debt and we have a large asset reserve. So we're also making significant money on the assets we have. No, no, we haven't talked about that yet. So, and I think it's clear that it, uh, the, it, whichever avenue we choose, we'll have to redraft the agreement, right? Because there was concern about, obviously, the, the agreement says that the HOA would pay 49% of it. And if it's a $10 million bond, then the HOA is not going to pay $5 million. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we would expect sort of the similar sort of agreement that we had before would sort of be on it. Yeah, but it would be, it would be, yeah, it would be, it would be cut down quite a bit because um, we wouldn't need to have an agreement with them that says that we're, we're going to do all, the mud is going to do, perform all of these things. We would need a, they would need to convey the land over uh, to us, any land that they own and the fence, uh, sorry, you don't own the, the, the land, but you do own the fence on the land, right? So in order to, Yeah. Easement? You have like an easement? Um, yeah. So we would and have I don't to. I'm speaking out of turn though. I, you know, I think that we would still expect the HOA to participate monetarily about the same level as they they would have initially. Dollar wise, dollar wise, not percentage wise. Five hundred. Right. Five hundred thousand. About five hundred thousand. For the whole thing, for all three. What? I don't. We don't know yet, but not just to. We wouldn't be taking it all the way. This would not be our project one hundred percent. We would expect to see some contribution from the HOA to. Again, that these are discussions that we need to have, but. Right, you can't commit the board to that much money. You don't want to raise, if you're going to raise taxes, the insurance is not going to raise Right, right. We, we, we had discussions around that, but. In, but you wouldn't have to raise reduce. You have reserves, right? You have, have $500,000 saved to pay for the wall in the original agreement. Well, we, we have other expenses that we have to pay for. We, are, we do save money every year for us. Thing. I mean, we can't just leave it. So that means we'll have to invest money because we own it right now to 
fix this and you know, contain it, do whatever repairs, and that's probably going to be. But it wouldn't be to the same extent. The, your your repairs are not going to be the same. $100,000 so that, that's really what we're going to have to pay. $100,000 in repairs? You have four hundred thousand for a brand new fence and one hundred thousand for repairing. And these fences in the world, like so many of those posts and shop, they're gonna have to replace them. There's nothing to nail sticks and so on those bottom pieces that are hanging with that with that bottom board. The wood is so rotten on the pickets, they're gonna have to replace that stuff. There's nothing to nail it to. Do you think we have to paint it because it looks looks like hell? So I I we don't have a bid for that yet because we were able to replace the whole thing, but it's it's not gonna be cheap. Do you think there's a way we could um, at least measure the temperature of, of the homeowners around here through a survey so that we could get an idea of which way the bond package is going to, you know, if it's going to be thumbs up or down and legal? Because that, you know, if, if, if we got a, an early on indication, that could help steer how well you want to do your repairs. I mean, what did you call it the other day? Ten dollar repairs, not for this, but just in general. Is that what they call them? But I, mean, uh, I, I love that you went along. But people want the. I mean, obviously the rock is much nicer, and but it's, it's not going to be cheap for us. I mean, it's a matter of nothing's been sitting there, so we're going to have to. You know, there, there's a lot of a lot of disrepair that's going to need to be done. Well, and 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 that's why we're all obligated to fix. And we told people we're going to do it now, and so we can't sit back and wait for another year or. Whatever it would be, we have to. And they already did that once with um, Sonoma a couple years ago. They replaced some stuff and repainted it and all that. It wasn't quite as there were a couple of them that it wasn't quite as bad. So I didn't find that much that cost was possible. But I think it was uh, especially when people get back to that but they can see the something that can really be considered because then we're incurring costs and then we're less yeah, and, and I, we understand this is new news to you uh, and, and your board. And so it's, you know, hopefully, you know, you'll take that and, and go, okay, we'll do a reconsideration on the way we maintain this fence. In the meantime, if we can figure out uh, the likelihood of this going forward and, you know, the general temperature of our own discussions seems to be that that's going to be well received especially if, if we're not talking about a massive increase in taxes, which right. you're not going to see that. That would be heatless uh, from what they said on the, uh, with the Jones Carter so I was on the committee for that before uh, with the HOA. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the landscaping is going to have these mature oak trees are going to die because they have put the footing in for engineering. So and that may be just the EDA awareness. I mean, to do stuff like that because they think that's such a compass on it. So there's a lot of other things people might not be too keen about. It, you know, it took us forever to get the trees this big, or it's nice to ensure landscaping for the neighborhood now. So I think that that's going to, they can engineer some of the ground that, but that's going to be more expensive. We'll, we'll learn the ins and outs of that mm -hmm. for our engineering firm. Yeah. We well, yeah, we look forward to um, working with you all. We always do, but it's this is not what we were planning to do. So we need to um, get some more information pretty quickly so we can move forward to get all these guys who basically have to do what they they've been waiting for for a couple months. It's we may lose them at, at that because it's not a big job. Rebid them to build a wood wall, wood fence. No, if, if we're just going to do some repairs, that's the question. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Sure. You know, you're going to replace the caps and all that, and some of the caps are missing the front of the metal ones that are unsafe. So there's a, you know, this is a whole rethought process. And if, even if, you, if they say, yeah, yeah, we want to have an election, <coughs> it winds up, who actually comes out with votes at the end? You know, that's, that's going to make a difference on it. And, um, some people say they want to do stuff, but then they, they change their mind or they show up. I'm sure. I'm sure about that, but if, if it doesn't pass, then we'll practice it. How much do you all spend each year on maintenance of the wall, typically? The fence. Of oh, the fence, excuse me. Yeah. 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 Or, uh, We've had a couple of times where there were termites. We just couldn't use the termites. We were against the wall. And if we're going to have to do stuff, it's their problem. 
we did add it for the, the um, so post when people replaced the metal post, they weren't even because it was the home by home last and over, they didn't even have property in some of these, but we got against the fences before they were going to have to come in and take them, you know, take over the people. But when we put the last fence in on the snow, we had a pink the bottom, mm -hmm. so we helped against termites and all that kind of stuff. They had it off the ground. So, so what's a range that you would say you typically spend on that fence? Each, like, like what is a range over the past ten years? What is the range that the HOA has spent maintaining that fence so and annually? Yeah, annually. We did have a couple. Yes, I know that we had. Um, also, we did do some repair on the soccer within the last ten, twelve years. And how much was that? I don't know. It was an old commercial. Okay. But they. Um, and how long have you been? How long have you been on the board? You've been on the. You've had a couple stints on the board. Well, I've been a lot, but you have to sit off for two years. All right. So th th this most recent time, how long have you been on the board? I will be on the board for two years in August. Okay. And when was your when was your prior stint? Two years before that. Okay. So between that four years and these past two years, what is a range of money that you all have spent on repairs for the fence in any given year? I'm sorry. So <clears throat> say in 2018, when you were on the board, and you were on the board what, 2018 to 2022 or 2016 I'm sorry, to 2020? I'm sorry, okay, so say in 2016, I mean, just ballpark, approximately how much would the HOA have spent on maintaining the fence? Pardon? Zippo. Okay. What about in 2017? So between 2016 and 2020, insignificant. insignificant expenses. Okay. So over the past two years, though, how much have you had to spend in repairs? Well, we've had some. And so approximately how much would that have cost? I don't know, it wasn't important. Okay. I mean, that's what I was saying, because that would be something similar to what we had to do. Although this fence was in good shape because it was mm -hmm. new in uh, 2011, and this fence was built in like 1998 or 1999, so it's, it's a lot different. So really, it sounds like there's a whole lot of deferred maintenance that's just being caught up. Well, that we just, like, that you all just, just kind of bank the money year after year. And so you should have reserves established if you if, if the budget's right that says okay we would have ordinarily spent you know depreciation x dollars over time and so that should be already kind of pre-budgeted so it shouldn't be a surprise. We do budget for a while. We have we have money to replace. The That's their budget. Mm -hmm. um, and we did actually spend money in twenty. I think it was twenty eighteen. We built that whole wall here on the Okay. And we forgot to tell how much that was, but that right. that we tore that out and we put up the wall for the fence of the Hackout and that post. And some of them we had to make eight feet tall because we're the um, absolute limit that they don't have. So we spent a couple hundred thousand at least on that. Okay. That and that, that was for like an entire replacement, right? It was just a short piece. That was a couple hundred thousand dollars. If no, it goes from Sonoma all the way around to um, those that office building that they're going back to. It goes through your butt and bus the bus yeah, off oh. the to the very end of the uh, uh, middle. Mm, okay. It's the, the uh, extension. And so when you're just having to replace like slats and do some repainting, that's negligible? Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> when they had the ice cream, so we don't we don't we save money every year for like I said and then if we need to generally they, they hold up pretty well. So when we just 
that have been saving, the reason why we've been saving as much money as we try to save is because we know stuff is going to be wrong. But then we're trying to have the alcohol is, you know, eight yeah. times as expensive as the original ones. Right. Uh, so, so then, just so everyone knows, the HOA has 400000 in the reserves for the pets. Yes. For the wall, okay. yeah. So there's adequate resources. For the agreement, yeah, the, the, and that was that's what they're going to use on replacing the fence. No, no, I know, but that's the HOA has reserves available for the fence, like to right. sort of cut through this. Yeah. No, but then we are going to expect you to honor this agreement and contribute to the block fence. Just like you asked us to honor the agreement. Right. We will also ask you to honor the agreement. Yeah, well, we, we will also probably I know you started the conversation today saying we were great partners. So, so, so if we pay for it all, then we're still great partners. Well, if you all are going to do a bond, that's not a bond. We can't do $20 million and pay it off. We don't have that kind of authority. I just, it feels a little bit like you're speaking out of, to be frank, both sides of your mouth. But when it comes from us, we should do it. When it comes from you, not so much. Well, no, I mean, we had planned to spend $100,000 because I told um, Mr. Bernard, I actually called him and I said, you know, we're going to have to do a bond because I told Mr. Bernard, I said, you know, we're going to have to do a bond because I told Mr. Bernard, I said, you know, we're going to have to do a bond because I told Mr. Bernard, I said, But if we came back and said we still expected the five hundred thousand, we wouldn't expect to get pushback from that. Well, that has to be the force because I can't, I can't speak. So, and like I said, we're already well. well the truth of the, 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 matter, the matter, matter is, is the constituents and our residents that are paying it regardless, right? Correct. So, if we bond the a hundred percent of it versus bonding ninety five percent of it and and, the, and them contributing five hundred k, that the what's going to miss lose out is the pool. Is this clubhouse? That's what's going to lose out. So I can see I can see her point, but I, I you know I, I think it's probably uh, no. I could I could say that that my HOA dues are um, are more than I've been necessary if it's just building up a reserve to pay for something that was never going to be paid for. That's an absolutely valid argument, and they would have to examine whether the dues were high enough to con or whether the dues were is justified to continue carrying their dues at the same level. Or reduce them. Well, your reserve analysis is going to say you have four hundred thousand dollars that now that's now not spoken for in a wall, right? So well, there's. Your... So you wouldn't have done all those those things if if you're going to put a wood fence in. That's what you're saying, right? No, we're we're actually we're taking quite a bit. We did plan budget to take quite a bit of money on the resources because we have things to have done. But then we need to replenish that because that's what our Yeah, that's what he's referring to. That's what you're referencing, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you have any questions, you know, we'd be happy to talk. But thank you for, you know, for talking to me about, you know, what your plans are. Because I wish you'd like to talk about this. Well, if you decide to go alone, which we can, um, 
And if we do do that, then we're not going to be very meaningful to be putting up a lot of wall when we just spent $400,000 out of pocket you know, for a year or two based on how long it would take to get the other stuff done. So, um, so I think that's there too. Yeah, no, we look, we certainly don't want to tear down a brand new fence to put up a rock wall. That wouldn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. um, and look, end of the day, to get this done, it's going to take the mud and the HOA to get the neighborhood on board with any sort of major project. Um, so we are going to have to work together. Sure. Yeah, we um, well, and then stepping back, we didn't, we'll finish, we'll wrap up here quickly, but as far as the way the district is required to get bids and where we have to advertise, it's maybe, maybe you follow those procedures. I don't know, but there is a lot of hoops we have to go through sure. to make sure. And, and I'm not exactly sure what's been done on these previous would satisfy those. So even if we did want to help, it is possible after we spoke with Carlton, we might have to rebid everything yeah. to the new standards. Yeah. So we're, we're not exactly in a spot where we could say yes, even if we wanted yeah, to. That's good. And, and I guess most people temperature what people want to think about what to say. Yeah, and unfortunately, the only way to get that temperature is to put on a ballot, let people actually vote on it. Mm -hmm. I because do think I, putting I don't it think on the ballot gives everyone a chance to answer. I, 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 I'm afraid of a, one of the, like a straw poll or a next door poll Me too, or yeah. Google, Google Forms like we've done in the past. It's just way too big of a ask for that. Um, and, and like that you said yourself, people will say yes to that, but then when, it, when they see the price tag later, well, they'll I mean, vote no. We, 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 well, they have, they, and they would have a vote. They would have their vote. Sorry. They would have their vote. That's part of the reason by putting it on the ballot. It sort of gives everyone a chance. Everybody, uh, they, right, and, level playing field for everybody to, oh, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to be their vote, yeah. But I do think if we wanted to do it, there is going to be a a big education process for sure. the neighborhood, mm -hmm. letting people know letting people know about the potential impact on home values in the neighborhood long term, all those other aspects. But I'll be honest, in, in, in that same vein, I would hope that you take back to the board that this is really a big step for us to be offering to go down this path and that that could be a real big plus for the, for the neighborhood and that it's not, oh, we're going to do this, but we have all these other things that are going to be roadblocks. I'm hoping that's not going to be the story that gets put forth to them. I'm hoping that it's going to be, you know what, they've rethought about it, the somebody has, and we need to consider this as a, a big step forward. And if you wanted, well, your meeting is what, Wednesday? I can't make that one. Yeah, I'm unavailable as well. I was I'm looking that up while, while she mentioned that. I was going to volunteer one of them, but I guess, <laughs> I guess I could show up to the meeting. Um, but again, we don't have a lot of facts, right? Like this is sort of, we're just kicking it off. I'm happy to relay the message, but I'm not going to have anything more substantive than what you got to do. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay, thank you for spending all this time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, collector's Corner is not enough time to talk about that. Um, <laughs> that's, in, that's it. Anything else for the, for the Lake Point Homeowners Association before we move on? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll close uh, 5B then and move on to 5C, collaboration with any other governments, entities. On issues affecting the district, do you have anything for that one? No. I'm mean, trying, trying to think of what it was. I'm meeting with um, the head of the uh, help the chair of the finance committee of the house next week. You had that? Hmm. I'm going okay. to. Be. Okay. And so, if what, and what does that? If how there's does that apply if, to us, if that's what I'm saying, if, if there's anything that we want to discuss or you want me to discuss, I'm happy to do so. 
Are there any anything within the purview of the House Finance Committee that impacts the mud? I, I, I can't think of anything that. off the top of my head. Did the internal <laughs> domain thing get approved last year? Did we ever yeah. get clarification? It got, yeah, it got approved. They got railroaded through. So they got it? Oh, yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Too late on that one. Yeah. Um, but as far as funding goes, we don't really receive any funding from the state or any legislative. Yeah. Um, Maybe they can build us a rock wall. Your marks. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on from five. Uh, five C. Uh, 5D uh, landscaping projects within the home, <coughs> uh, Lake Point Homeowners Association. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, that's, I went backwards. My bad. Five. No, I was that's correct. 5D. 5D. Yeah, that one That one we can table. There isn't any, any further conversation since last month on the for with the Point Homeowners Association. In fact, that can probably fall off, uh, fall off the agenda. And we're not in that spot to talk about that yet, but just so we remember. Um, anything further for outreach committee before we move on? Okay, so we'll close five completely and move on to six finance and audit committee. Okay, six A um, district's financial reports and payment of the district's bills, invoices, and directors. So, not going to his team have QuickBooks up. We're still, I think we have a little work to fine tune a couple of the reports for next next month. <coughs> I won't spend a ton of time on it. Um, but on page, just so I can make sure everyone saw it, page 32, Nugget does include of, uh, the actual spend to date. And this is through 1231, I believe, right? Yes. Um, so to date, we've spent $289,000. I haven't had a chance to. I'll set up a, a spreadsheet that compares us to a prorated budget for the next one. We'll do a little more detailed dive. But this is helpful that Nugget now has this in QuickBooks. We can look at this real time. I isn't that isn't that already right there in column two, the budget? Isn't that a prorated? No, it's not. I don't know if that's, is that the prorated budget? Or I just did uh, budget actuals and budget spent to date through 1231. Okay. Uh, I okay. think I've got a percentage in there too, but I can't remember. But that's so full year budget, not not prorated budget, right? No, I didn't no, prorate. Prorated, yeah. This is prorated, right? Uh, yeah, it would be yeah. two hundred sixty-four yeah. thousand. It looks like QuickBooks prorated for it. Yeah, yeah. So I was I didn't get a chance to check the budget to see if it worked, but um, so according to this though, we're basically overspent by twenty-five thousand through the first three months, which isn't that bad considering some of the bigger projects we've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, now I know the Carlsbad ones I think are going to hit soon, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we'll we'll go above, but. As the weather gets colder, we're going to have very little projects in Feb and March before we ramp back up. So I don't think we're that far off. There are a couple lines that we'll go through, but I'd rather yeah, why sort of get all care? this. Why is tree care 700 percent? Did we grossly misbudge that or something get coded wrong? Tree care 72026. Is that part from the. Uh, yeah, it says 702 percent year to date. Yeah, it may be a typo that. We've got in there. I'll have to look at it. Yeah, it's just twenty one. So, well, it's like twenty one thousand. I mean, does tree care come out of? Uh, does uh, fire break come out of tree care? Or is that uh, we have a separate? It might have got coded wrong. I'll check into it. Well, it could be these all these um, trees that we had to, to take out. No, we did. I mean, we did do some stuff that was in tree care. Yeah, like the uh, well, yeah. tree lifts and stuff. Yes. Those were, um, we removed a bunch of trees down in Saka. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't remember that cost some twenty one grand though. No, I, I think that, I think that's probably a that something got coded wrong there, <clears> as well <throat> as uh, something probably got coded wrong in the habitat plan improvement. Fifty grand. Yeah, fifty thousand dollars already on that. That was the wall. That was the, sorry, the fire break, wasn't that? I think we asked about that last time. Oh, is that what the fire break is? Mm -hmm. I think. The so how is the, why is the fire break four hundred percent? No, I think the bills came in after. That's a prorated piece of the budget, but we spent a lot of it doing the fire, fire break already. Is that what happened? Oh, so what you're saying is we're not 285 overspent. We're overspent 285% to date. Exactly. And when the we year finishes. We incurred most of the cost, but only three months of budget. Right. That's Okay. The, okay. Yeah, that's kind of misleading that, that line, Adam. Or that, that column's kind of misleading that number. Yeah. But I'm not sure if there's. But yeah, so I'll put this in a, a spreadsheet, and then I can filter it and highlight sort of the bigger ones for the next meeting. 
but this is this is good because if we did have questions, even if Nugget's unavailable, we can now go into QuickBooks and drill down and see what's there. Right. Well, you can generate these reports however you want. Exactly. Right? Yeah, you yeah. can add columns, so, pull up. Columns. So the information is much more readily available. It's very helpful. Um, so then moving to the bills on page 20. Well done, Nugget, by the way. <laughs> no, well good. done. It took well, me two hours to figure out fun. that report. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not fun, but yeah. now you got to save them. Now it's easy. I did save it. Um, page 27 of the bills. Most of these are the standard recurring mm -hmm. um, invoices were attached in the packet. I don't know if anyone has questions on this. Uh, and just a real quick update, uh, land cares, bookkeepers been out sick. So we haven't gotten any of their invoices. I yet. saw they were late this month. Yeah. So, land care? Uh, LRI. Oh, I'm LRI. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely a lot lighter than they normally are. Yeah, so yeah, so, so we'll get those. So we'll double those next month. Uh, we can double them next month. Or if y'all want, y'all can say, yeah, when, we, when they do finally get them in, go ahead and pay them. It's kind of up to y'all. Because they didn't even build the monthly. Yeah, they haven't even built the our monthly build. stuff. Well, the truth of the matter is, is they kind of fall. They kind of fall in the same category, uh, except for the projects, individual projects. They fall in the same category. Like, like we approve that budget at the beginning of the year. We approve their 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 rate at the beginning of the year. So, do we? If there's no change, do we need to keep bringing that back to the board? I don't think so. And I noticed that a lot of stuff has fallen off of here too, which I think that is because y'all got it electronically connected yes. right now paid electronically now instead of instead of checks that need to be approved yep right no, we do i i was going to talk to nugget on how we should present that because we should still outline that we paid wtcpua two thousand dollars that we paid yeah, the we city can, of austin utilities i, I think so, in uh we can look at that in bills paid and make exactly. that report so we'll, we'll run a report of expenses for the month to get it approved next time yeah so rather than doing it through the through the invoices like we have been for years we'll do that We'll do it. We'll just take a look at it and anything, if anything <coughs> looks out, yeah. out of the ordinary. That's fair. Yeah. And then on this, I noticed we're still sending a few checks. I know we're struggling to get Frost up. Yeah. Today, but... Frost does not do an ACH. And I and yeah. they can't. We'll One person told me the they don't do it at all. One person said, well, to do it, awesome. you've got to mail them a check first. They've got to submit a form and then. Oh, you might have to jump story. through some hoops to get it connected, but yeah. I don't think. In but the good thing is, like, if you look at this, we can get <clears throat> Carlton hooked up, Tumco, yeah. LRI, uh, Doug Elite. Yeah. Like, all these are recurring, and then they're just there's no more checks that we can. Yeah, do I mean, and actually, I can put every vendor we have in bill pay, and I don't have to print checks. I can just go to yeah. bill pay and. Do yeah, that. I think that's, that's the. Yeah. That was the hope. Yeah, that's yeah, where we're going. I mean, it is what two thousand one. Are we in 2001? We're getting there. Getting there. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, um, but, but yeah, to make, to make it as seamless as possible. To make it, let's say but yeah, I yeah. guess on the motion, if y'all want to give me approval to pay LRI when they do come in, if y'all like want to do that. 12, just, just their monthly. It's 12,000. Is it over 13, 1, 22, something. But like that's that. two different things, right? It's 12,000 12, something. 12,000 something and 900 something. Yeah, 12,000 from mowing, mowing 900, and 900 from irrigation. So, um, that's, that's actually, let's, let's just pull that up from last year and get the exact numbers, and then we can, and then we can say, and then we can make a motion that just says if it's not, there's, if there's not a significant difference between last month's and this month's, we can approve Nugget. Just go ahead and pay yeah, it when it gets It's the same every month. They have it. So yeah. Yeah, that one's the same. And then proposals, yeah. extra work. The only thing that's different is if they've done any any irrigation work that's right. not included in the irrigation, right? Right. That's not included in the irrigation contract, like over and above what they expect it to do. Yeah, it's twelve thousand one ninety three for landscaping management, and nine twenty eight forty for irrigation. So I'll mention that I have that number now. Um, Actually, could you just add those two together and we'll. 13,122. 13, 122? 22, yeah. So, so I make a motion that uh, when Nugget does receive uh, the invoices from LRI, the two, two combined, um, as long as there's not a significant difference, that's that, let's say as long as there's not a plus or minus 5% difference in the $13,122. Um, I make a motion that we uh, we approve Nugget approving those and go ahead and paying those bills when it comes in. One received. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. A second. A second. Any, any 
concerns? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Is that clear as mud? No, that's fine. You're fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you, you can approve You can listen to the recording five times so you can figure out what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to listen to it. But yes. Okay. No, it's it's yeah, because we recognize enough. that they they're 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 late with their invoice, but we know that it's it doesn't fluctuate much at all. So mm -hmm. I mean we've already approved the budget. We've already approved the contract. Right. So it's, it, it's just yeah. getting redundant. Yeah, do we need to do that every month? That's it, if you've approved a specific total amount for the year Annual. for them and that that includes a specific amount on a monthly basis, if you've approved those things, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to bring that back anything outside of that. You well, it's just a monthly back. installment and we're not really approving yeah. that. We're approving Nugget to spend it, to, to, to go ahead and pay it. So yeah. it's just redundant anyway, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do we need to do anything to change that process with Nugget? No. If I, well, okay. For the record, since you're changing your process, you might want to make a motion to um, allow him to pay that specific vendor every month based on the current approved budgeted amounts right that way he just does it or automatically prorated monthly amount of the annual contract go ahead go ahead what you want to make a motion <laughs> that was a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> okay i motioned that we authorize nugget to pay a prorated amount of the annual the approved annual budget to lri um at, at will monthly at will I'll second that. And this is on strip on, on LRI. I, no, this is just on LRI's annual contract and LRI's. Um, I thought we just did that. <clears throat> we you did it on. A, to do next month. This is a perpetual. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to cancel the first one? No. We, we did. We voted. Vote. We voted on it. Okay. So uh, I have a second. Is everybody familiar and comfortable with what we're talking about? Yeah, I'll do it. Pretty good. Um, any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We could possibly do the same thing with Tomb Comp too. Yeah. It's a yeah. set amount every month. It's, I know it's two nugget, but. Go ahead. <laughs> should I amend the previous one to include it? Or do it just make another motion. Entirely up to you all. Separate motion. Okay. Different I'll make a motion that we we authorize Nugget to pay Tomb Co consultants their $5,000 per month as per the budget for $60,000 per year total. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're we're slowly chipping away at these here. These approvals will drop off. Yeah. Right. We do still need the overages, though. We'll need you to bring back exactly if yes. there's anything from those who did next yeah. month. Right. Or if there's anything, if there's any overages from from the mm -hmm. uh, irrigation, gotcha. et cetera, et cetera. Gotcha. And I did notice we're missing the storage and AT and all that. So there'll be a couple catch ups for next month, I assume. Like the monthly AT and T cellular, I didn't see in the bills. <clears throat> the storage thing, I didn't. Oh see yeah, in the bills. we're yeah storage usually, will be next month. Okay. I paid for it yet. I think Tuesday. Okay. So I did three months in advance. So got it. I'll okay. put it on next month bill. <laughs> okay. It's nine seventy something, but I'll do it next month. AT and T, we won't see right. That's like the that's like that's the, an auto pay. Yeah, we won't see that. Uh, AT and T. Oh, so auto we'll see it in the expense. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, we definitely need to keep an eye on it though, because that AT and T. No, so so we'll report some the of these vendors, just, so huh? everyone knows yeah. what we're paying. We'll we'll generate Separate a report that as bills we're paying each month, and then we'll figure out a way to do see if I can pull out a report to do auto auto expenses. What was auto paid? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we need a a resolution on that? On what? On on the auto pays, so we understand which bills are. Or auto pay. I think we did that months ago. Did we? Yeah. Yeah. I think what we'll do on a monthly basis is we'll show what's getting paid, so the board gets a chance to mm -hmm. review it, and um, that way you can see, you know, it's auto yeah. or yeah. Like you'll see all the or like, it's variable. You know, like yes. you is, is 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 variable in like the water. Is. The water. Yeah, I think it's probably important for you just to have on hand copies of those invoices. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe maybe you still do you still go through some okay. of the same work that you do and you just post so, them out there so that all if the there are any are on the network in the vendors folder they, they already are yep. oh okay so if that are if that process is already underway then perfect because if i got to coordinate with nugget how we save them but i'm saving them all on the lake point line I am so every invoice in, is there uh, i put them in each month when i do the board packet 
the invoices for the month are there too. And yeah. then I also bring them with Well, me. the question is, are you going to continue to do that? Yes. Okay. All right. So if you do that and you come and you say, you know, we, through the process, we learned that AT&T is the hundred thousand dollars this month and, and you'll have the invoice to back up why. And yeah. we can, we can dig into that in the, in yeah. the meeting. Yeah. Answer any questions that we might have on those things. So as you can see, like this, this transition from the old system to QuickBooks is progressing. We're not quite there, but the, the benefit is we can easily generate whatever reports we want. Pretty, pretty easy going forward. And we couldn't do that before. So we're getting there. Um, so I will make a motion then that we pay the checks um, totaling $15,387.93 um, as part of the December bill payments. Second. That was a tie. I don't know who gets it. David, David second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We on? And then the last one is director fees. Um, I will make a motion. Yeah, let me just reiterate my request that I made to you earlier um, that you left align that column so that we can. Oh, I changed the source sheet, the Google sheet. So now when we print it, it'll it'll be aligned that way. Okay, left align. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just for future. So um, Terry's comment was the summary of work is hard to read because it's centered. Mm -hmm. So I left aligned it and made it a little bit bigger. It still cuts off because it's too long, but you can at least see most of it. I try to be really concise. And then if y'all approve those, then I'll enter those into paychecks and they should direct deposit to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I got direct deposit account. last time. So, work, yeah. I think I did too, yeah. Can we're, we, um, we're off and running. we can have this conversation separate, but can I change my deductions? Can I like max out all the deductions. Uh, I did notice that on our W-2s. Uh, We're not getting anything deducted, so it's like, it's not a big it's deal. very, right? very tiny deduction, right. so it's going to cost me a bunch in April. Yeah, well, <laughs> on Jan 15th, actually, so it's Monday. <laughs> Thank you. On Monday. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't see why we can't. I just need to update them in the system. Right? Yeah. So but is that a pain for you to, to make that payment? You just you set it in paychecks so that the default is... Yeah, it's say I make Elon Musk money and they deduct the max amount of every check. Yeah, because what basically. what we did you when we set that up originally in QuickBooks, we were under QuickBooks payroll and they were just set to minimums amounts. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we switched to online, we just took that file, transported it yeah. over, yeah. and then went on. So yeah, I will get with paychecks, find out what we need to do to make those adjustments. Yeah. And get I'm not done. sure about the other directors, but for me we'll just max them up. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Maybe you should have individual emails with all of us. Uh, have individual emails with all of us to determine what our deduction should be, I'll get with or give us the capability of changing that deduction. You around. can, uh, if y'all log into Paychecks, create your account. You can probably change them. Oh, okay. oh, let me mm. check. I don't. See I did set that. up an account back when we got the email. So. Oh, check. I never had to do it because I had an account. So yeah, I you had an account. Uh, okay. uh, I'll, I'll call her in the morning and find out and see if y'all can change those through your. Yeah, or we can look into it. It's not urgent, but if we can. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, so I will make a motion to pay director fees for December, totaling $3,978. I'll second that one. Uh, just quickly, where do you see that total? It's on page, December, page 30. 30. There's a December total. You have to zoom it in. Yeah, this one, it's a little hard to Oh, read. I see it now. Yeah. Okay. I see and it. It's broken down by director. And then okay. if you go down a couple of sections, you can see the year to date. Mm. Um, there was a couple of January ones entered that are in there. But, but those are not being paid tonight. Exactly. That's, okay. that's still. A yeah, we're going to pay these on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a second. Any further discussion or questions about that? All in favor? Aye. 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 So that, unless, unless David has anything, that's all I had for 6A. Right. Um, moving to six. I want to back up for a second, if you don't sure. mind. Um, this is actually for me, and I've got two lines here on for work on twelve twenty. And I think you're only allowed to have just just for clarification, you're only allowed to have one, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, per diem. Okay. Can we strike one of my rows? I mean, the work was done and, and put it on one row, but I think that <clears throat> probably just work a three day month next month. I, I just want to make sure it's 
it's correct or whatever. Okay, I will. So Nugget can pay this. I'll we'll leave December where it is, and I'll reduce one day in February in January. Okay. But I'll highlight it on the sheets so you can see that we did it. Okay. So there'll be a paper trail. It's kind of part of what so uh, yeah, I did. I didn't catch it. That's what it was. Okay. But I, I just wanted to clarify, just to make sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Um. Okay. So six B budget amendments. Um, sort of, as I said, I think for the next meeting, we'll have okay. budget actual synced up and we'll present any amendments that we need. So we'll table that, I guess, for until the next meeting. Um, 6C, district five-year plan. Again, we'll table that with the big sort of um, item being the fence that's probably going to heavily weigh into the five-year plan when we decide what the numbers are with that. Um, and then the quarterly investment schedule, I'll let David speak to this, but it is on page. The wrong way. 35 is the last one. Is that page right? 35, yep, yeah, last page. And I, I checked that transfer did go into the cost account. So um, this is actually a touch dated. Um, you'll notice that the first treasure we had it matured um, on 12-28-23. And the proceeds from that, um, that bill have been put into a money market fund. And so we have roughly, um, I think it's a million 60,000 in money market, in the money market fund <clears throat> along with the three treasuries. And with the transfer of 675, is that what we said? Yep. It'll be around 1.7 million. And um, Jody and I are going to talk about how to um, deploy that out of the money market into um, in the fixed income holdings. But I'll be honest, we're, we're earning just short of 5% on our money market. And um, we're not going to get really any. Uh, any additional incremental returns by buying treasuries at this point. Which so bank? it's it's not costing us anything. The way, what's that? Which bank are you getting that on the money? Um, the, it's with Frost, but the money market is through Fidelity. It's one of their offerings. Um, I'm looking at another money market that Schwab offers. Um, but I'm not sure if it's going to exactly fit. It would it would provide returns of about 5.4. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you secondly because we've got some CDs that are going to do, and we're mm -hmm. paying about a little over five percent to that company. So that's interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have liquid liquid way of making the same return. So when we when we do the budget next month, we've never worked this in. We'll try and put something in for investment returns because 3.3 percent of five percent is 165,000 so it's like a real number that we need to get into the budget um, obviously we didn't have three million a, month, a week ago um, and we're going to add to it and draw it down so it's not going to be right. an exact sort of thing right but we, we really have not been capturing this level of income in our budget which we should be we should add that in there mm. um, so we'll find a way to work that in now as we sort of got everything transitioned in there. I thought I had a line item for interest on investments on the top of that sheet. On the top of that sheet? Of the budget versus actual. Let's see. I, don't see, I see all the expenses, which I like the way that's coming I might through. Have, I might have taken but, it out. Yeah, I, I don't see the income one, but we'll definitely add it. Um, okay. And then we'll, we'll reconcile it through Frost. Yeah, because I know um, I put a code in there for that. You're not talking about you're not talking about the cash flow statement, right? Because it, it's not cash flow, right? You're not talking about not that. the bank. Oh, in the bank rack. Um, no, I'm I'm referring to. I'm asking what nuggets. Oh, what, what budget form? versus actual sheet on that report? There's no there's no income there. It, it, okay, I, yeah, thought it, I don't originally I had it on the top line. Oh, and I was there is a it. line up there that says income, but yeah, it's in blank. total income that's yeah. blank. Did it, okay. And then I think the, the next thing we need to do is work with Carlton and Travis County to close the PNC account, make sure they have the frost details. But we still are going to get money for the next 30 to 45 days. 
So we're hesitant to close it until we get here's the big chunk the, Here's the kicker, though. We still have outstanding tax debt from 2009. So, so they should they, transfer it to the new account. I mean, they, it, like Travis County yeah. should forward it to our new account, not the old one. That's true. That's um, true. So it's a matter of making sure Travis County knows yeah. and then just closing those PNC accounts down there. We're still paying for them. It's it's not that much, but we should just get rid of them at once we do everything. And with that, we want to merge MUD 3 and MUD 5 with Travis County. So all the reports next year will show Lake Point MUD, right. not MUD 3, MUD 5, which no one knows who that is. Right. So and, and and I did notice that we need to do that with TCAD too, right? Yes. So we have to do I think right. that'll happen. Yeah, whatever process you need to start with that TCAD. process of the county and... The muds combining and all of that going together. So yes, yeah, so hopefully those fees will cut, be cut in half next year. So you I think it's fees. based on the amount. It's we based on or it's based it? on the number of homes and the amount you collect. Yeah, ah, so they're so still get should there. be the same, just one. Number. Be the same, just yeah. one number. That's terrible. Um. So that that I guess I'll make a motion that we approve. Do you want to make it? Uh, you, you, you're already halfway out. Okay. So I'll, I'll finish my motion um, that we approve the quarterly investment schedule as of 1231. I second. I second. <laughs> well, the only thing I would do would be to say with a notation that the uh, the Treasury bill dated uh, 1228 has matured by a uh, year end. <clears throat> As we discussed. Yeah. So. Fair point. Okay. Grab that amendment from him. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on, did we discuss budget amendments? Yeah. What we um, what we highlighted is Nugget and I are working on getting the QuickBooks and all the reports working. So we'll have something for next month. Oh, okay. Budget so we'll, we'll do budget. So we tabled it for next okay. month. So oh, you did already. Yeah. Okay, great. So we're done with six. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll we'll close six and move on to seven. Preserve committee. So Director Mincy's not here. Um, I don't have anything of consequence today. Okay. So we'll table seven entirely. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about the Boy Scout Eagle project since he came in here. So yeah, I'll I'll follow back, back up with that. That was actually on my agenda for my work day this week on mud stuff, but okay, didn't get there. All right, uh, closing seven. Then moving on to eight. Uh, communications committee. So district's digital accounts updates. If if anything is necessary, anything necessary. I don't think so. Doug's got all the issues sort of mm -hmm. running. The website's been working fine. Everything's good. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Mike, you know, yeah. That's great. Oh, okay. I just made some changes and I'm going to offset the schedule. I should get them now. Okay. It doesn't notify me when I make changes. Testing. So if you wouldn't mind. Testing it? Yeah, sure. Just, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Um, well, actually, I have it open now. I'll just do it real quick. Um, okay. Yeah, and I, I, since we're really honing in on what we're doing here, um, and there's not a lot of effort, I, I wouldn't expect there to be a lot of effort. I, I, other than you know, making sure the minutes or uh, information is passed on for the minutes or whatever, I think that we we'll have we have some hours of yours that we could spend, I would think, and so that's probably the best way for us to do it. Uh, kind of an asynchronous uh, things that we come up with, and we may talk about them in, in a session. We may talk about them amongst the committee and get back to you. Um, but we can start kind of chipping away at that. When I have questions, I'm going to kind of err on the side of the comment and recommend people what I think is best. Okay. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think that's fine. Take the creative liberty to make it. How, and the same thing is true of the spreadsheet. Like I just put together an, uh, you know, a pretty rudimentary spreadsheet. So if you, 
if you take that and own it and you need a column that says this or that or whatever, it's just take it. Yeah. You can continue to. Okay. Um, so, uh, anything else about that? Um, so, we probably won't get into it tonight, but I'm interested to learn if you are interested in more of an annual contract versus this month to month that we've been doing. Because we've, we've been doing this now, what, a year? So, are you interested in like doing an annual contract? Is there any benefits to that? I think, the, I think we've done a good job. You get the bugs worked out. This seems to work really, really efficient. Now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, your replacement. Yeah. Sure. That's fine. Yeah, no problem at all. I, I do wish we could figure out somehow how we could uh, remote in. Um, to, to make these, yeah, to, to make these meetings a little bit more, a little bit yeah, like easier a, like than we did, did before. Oh, you know, yeah, a couple yeah. meetings ago, where we kind of just did it through uh, band aids. That's kind of, yeah. Because I'm not going to be here in uh, February. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't think, change that one. Yeah, the only, the, and it, it's not going to affect you, but the only requirement is in, in order to establish a quorum, we have to have a quorum in the room, and then anybody can join from, you know, say we're at full full strength, we could have up to two uh, directors joining virtually, depending on, you know, travel schedule and that kind of thing. Can they vote? So, like if we have three here and two on the phone, they can vote, all right? five can, can vote, vote. but yeah. you can't do the meeting unless you have three here. Present. You just have to Correct. have a quorum here. That's yeah, right. we have to have a quorum. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Sounds like a fun project. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think we're going to start feeding you kind of, you know, we have the website requirements that we've talked about. Uh, th there's a number of things that we should have on our website that we don't. Um, I, the, the, the one, mo the most recent one was the, and you probably saw it on the, on the spreadsheet now, but it's basically, can you take, take a look at that page? Uh, what is a mud page that I've, that I've gave you a link to? And yeah, and steal it, and we can we can modify it to be more uh, relevant to our particular mud. But that's that would be helpful. And then I would even suggest we put that out into the put a blurb about that in the HOA newsletter to say like there's a new page out here because one of the one of my goals uh, in becoming involved with the Lake Point Mud Board was to clearly delineate the responsibilities the roles and responsibilities of the HOA versus the mud because it's been confusing for, since I've been in the neighborhood for 10 years, it's always been confusing who does what, Email emails for the landscaping go to the HOA, emails for HOA stuff come to us, nobody really quite sure. Um, so that I think that would go a long way and help too. Mm -hmm. Never really understand. Yeah, there's some financial stuff I need to add on there too. Like there's, there's some things, but I think the, one that's going to come first is probably this WTC PUA role and responsibilities. Right. We'll probably want to get that up in the next two to three weeks, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll, and then Jody, you and I will have to dig out the, we'll have to dig out the, the list of things that are required for a mud to have on their website. Right. Kelly, I think in the summary, Long At time ago. Point. Yeah, 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 it was a year ago now. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we've been too busy to do anything about it. Yeah. So I, I would love to turn that over to Doug and start and for him to take a look at that. And maybe we prioritize for him and say, you know, this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. I think when we talked about it before, we talked about first sitting down and coming up with a list of things that are required and available. And then another category of things that are required but may be available. Mm -hmm. And then another thing, another category of things that are required but are not available. And that's the stuff that, you know, that's yep. the high hanging fruit essentially. So, okay. We just uh, split A, A and 8B so that all that website stuff is on 8B. We just talked about IT issues and ongoing requests. The other big, so moving on to 8C, we're going to move on. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other big piece of work is the district, the district's historical records. 
that we haven't even approached how to, you know, we're doing it, the real time is becoming better, right? As we've discussed, quick, quick, yep. quick books and all that stuff, um, getting the streamlining all of the, the financial uh, bill paying and all of that stuff is, is certainly working for the real time. And I do want to get your new person set up on the, on yeah. the website, on the, on the network. But on the on our network, oh okay. So then she can just save the files where I save them. Like instead of you or her putting them into PDF, and then me putting them onto our network or pulling them down, we can just do it once between the two of us. Okay. But I have the last two years of stuff there for her too if she wants to see it. So it's all saved out. Okay. Let's just go the record. You want me to help scan? Do you have a? Do you have a cost-effective way to, for us to do that that's not your bill rate? Like you can hi hire uh, temps or whatever? Well, yes, it is a very large job, but also it's, it's complex because there's, part, there's boxes and boxes of files that would first need to go, you probably would have to work in conjunction with Carlton because Carlton would have to say, scan, don't scan, trash, scan, trash, scan, trash. And, and some you know, we need to keep originals even when we scan. Like this. Mm -hmm. It's a mix. Any it's a hodgepodge. Any idea what the split is? Mm. 50, 50 of it be I mean, we don't need uh, to keep invoices from the yeah, AT&T back in from 2001. Uh, we've got uh, right around 250 file boxes. <laughs> total. 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 Yeah, so it's it really is going through those boxes individually and with a legal eye and saying what needs to be kept in, in that lean on Carlton for that type of a service. I was going to say the reverse might be cheaper. Oh, right. Right. Might be easier to have it scanned first. And then Carl's or just, just give them the keep. directive, scan it, and if it's an invoice, we don't need to keep it. Is that everything is that, else we can blank statement we can make? So you want to look at what's your records retention policy. There's mm -hmm. some stuff that's anything after five years. Trash it. Even yeah. even some important stuff after five years. I mean, years. anything that's ongoing, obviously if you have uh, it has to do with certain financials, meaning if you have loans or bonds or any of that. We would want to look at that information, but your regular bill pay, monthly bill pay, right? What some of the stuff is two years. Degree of it is two years, stuff, but yeah, yeah. So yeah. somebody would have to look at it to deter make that determination, and you want to look at, you know, what's your what's your most cost effective person to look at that. Um, there's very little that you're going to need to keep originals. Um, and uh, board somebody minutes, will, uh, anything with attorney information. Uh, legal laws. contracts, right? Those things are indefinite. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and maybe it's a hybrid approach, right? Maybe, maybe we have, maybe we have, give Doug's group a, a blanket statement. Any invoices over, you know, over five years old, over three years old, whatever, the, whatever threshold we give. Everything that's in the storage facility over here on six twenty is two thousand eighteen prior. To district formation. That's. And if there was any doubt if you needed anything, we could do, we could take things or two concerns to just have actually shred it. We could scan it, just put it in an archive, archive it. And then at least you'd have some archive. It's true. It could be easier to find on that drive than in a box. <coughs> Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, the other option is I could grab when I go get a box, scan through it. If it's invoices, bills, stuff we don't need, chuck it there and then take in the rest. Are there any redundancy or backup requirements? Offsite backups or separation of backups. You talking about like IS, like a, like standards, mm -hmm. like that we have to abide by. The records retention policy, um, state librarian archives, record retention policy doesn't really address that. 
it's better to have certain there, like there are certain documents that you want to have uh, an electronic and where you have to keep the paper and they should not be kept in the same place. But other than that, there's not a specific legal requirement with regard to those record retention, that record retention policy. Now, there are certain documents that you have to keep, like, for example, um, certain documents have to be kept in uh, a, a storage methodology that's uh, fire, you know, where you have fire prevention, right? right? So well, certain- Which they're not right now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's fire suppression systems in there. They're climate controlled. <laughs> yeah. They're so climate gotta... controlled storage facilities, is what yeah. we're in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but this would this would be no. like a minute subset of what's in yes. the box. Oh, yes. Very minute. Subset. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How, uh, it's a hard question to answer, but how many pages would you say is in a box? There's at least five reams, so that's twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is having you go through it, even a single box the most cost effective way? Could be. I mean, you can go through 2,500 pages. I can, I can spend a couple hours of my month and just kind of go grab a box and kind of go through it and take it to Doug or, you know. It's not a few weeks that people need to go back, sort through it, are they is there any organization to them at all are they organized by year like you can say these boxes are 18 uh, uh, or the only ones i know that are somewhat organized are the ones we got from lloyd gosling when um, mud three and mud five merged and they're just it's a box and it's got a blog number on it and that's it yeah, it hadn't even been opened, mm. so I don't know. And then I know what we got from Randy. Uh, Actually, sounds like that's probably one of the higher priority ones to scan. Yeah. And then uh, mm. the ones that we've kept over the years, yeah. you know, our file <laughs> box is going to be box. this board packet. It's just boxes yeah. of those, like boxes of those. Like so. mm -hmm. And then they've got yeah, there's no packet. They've got our invoices. We have to keep board minutes board. indefinitely. It's the minutes. Minutes, yes. yes. The board packets. The packets. Board packets, no. Yeah. Minutes are indefinite. I do have, I did say. Yeah, well, that's your record. And they're useful yeah. if, you, if they're, if they're yeah. Yeah. ordered yeah. and thought just about uh, reference. Yeah. So do we want we to, uh, I, I didn't plan on it, but do we want to start to discuss this tonight, a uh, plan of action, and maybe make a motion to have if nugget, if nuggets, the do, well, actually, do we even need to have a motion for nugget to look through a box and throw away stuff? Just direction. No, just direction. Okay. Yeah, if you want to go through and start the process, sort of get yeah. a feel for what it is, and then we can come back mm -hmm. and see if we can set up a process. Okay. Uh, I think that's a great idea. Cool. We get us started at least, right? Yeah. And we need to do it, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. We're making progress. So is that is that clear for you, Nugget? It is. Okay. Uh, anything else on 8C before we move on? No. Nope. 8D, resident communications. So we have talked about the one that does need to go out about the construction. We mentioned that earlier. Uh, that's ready to go, I believe. We may need to, actually, I may need to review that to just make sure that it's up to, um, that it is, uh, the present tense versus the future tense, because I think when I, when I draft when I um, drafted uh, that in December yeah. in December I was saying on January 1st this is going to go into effect and that that type of stuff I just would want that to be cleaned up first can you take a stab at that first can you take a stab at reading through that sure. email and um, okay I do think some of it is uh, future tense we're gonna do this we're gonna do that versus this, this is the yes mm-hmm yeah, and as far as, um, gosh, what did we talk about doing? Are, are we going to put that entire that entire um, verbiage in an email, or are we going to put, should we shorten that and put it in a link and then put the the letter on the construction? Like the, the announcement on the construction? Right. Yeah. Probably what we did with the trash, right? Just a paragraph or two, and then 
either a PDF or a link. Yeah, how long is it? Yeah, I'd put a PDF with it. I don't recall how long. Yeah, it's only three quarters of a page, so maybe. I think you probably want to put the PDF because a lot of people won't go to the website, but either way. <laughs> so, so cut the verbiage and put it in an email. Attach a PDF that says exactly the same thing, but and a include a link the site, yeah. and include a link that goes to the same thing. Yeah, Makes it sort of dummy proof for everybody. I think that's what we had in mind anyway, and I don't recall specifically, but we we redid the rule completely, and it was it, it's a. Uh, the rule no one likes, but um, to have the medium. we kept the deposit, but only for large scale projects. I believe over a hundred thousand require a deposit of five thousand dollars. I think is where we settled. Mm -hmm. um, whereas before, it was any project required a two thousand or, or a different scale of deposit. There was a scale, yeah. but essentially, the old rules read putting in a tree, you'd have to put down a two thousand dollar deposit. Like it was. Yeah. Well, that and then also, and I guess we we can work on this coordinating with you. But I know walking around my neighborhood, there's multiple massive projects going on that we have not been notified about, and I'm sure you have not been notified about. Well, and I think the biggest problem, from what I understand, and I've been talking to Jason uh, more about this, <coughs> not only now, but trying to figure out how to coordinate this with each other. Yep. Um, but we're going to. We had one guy on the ACC with three members who hasn't been showing up or participating in months, and I guess he thought he was off, but it's up to us. <laughs> oh, wow. So, we're going to yeah. so we're gonna do that in the next meeting. We're going to do that in the next So let's just let you guys be talking about the next meeting with mm -hmm. a, third, a third person. Just right now, you know, they don't get paid anything, and they're you know, volunteers and all that. But my understanding from talking to Jason is there's not really a way with real managed software to forward that easily so that they're like gonna have to do something manually which would be more of an onus on their party doing stuff for free. So we, we need to figure out a way to do it. So that's why I'm just trying to we need if we know what the rules are then we can try to figure out how we can coordinate that in a better way. And <clears throat> quite frankly there are projects in the neighborhood that we didn't know about. And oh, I'm sure, you know, we yeah. have to kind of drive around and yep. um, there's stuff that comes up and we can yeah, exactly. But yeah, even if your ACC committee has a spreadsheet of things they approve, that would be all we need. It's just something like a list of some sort. Like it doesn't have to be anything really onerous on your side, just alerting us so we can follow up with that. Right, right. Yeah, and it's they use the software that the management company software. So it's not like but I'll, I'll find out more about it. Yeah. But yeah, and like, it is frustrating because certain residents get approval from you and think they're done, and then we knock on their door and they get quite upset um, that they didn't know about it. So, in a perfect world, they would do both approvals, and ours is an automatic approval. We don't really consider it. We just need to deposit. And we need to know about it so we can monitor. Right, we don't evaluate. Like, ours no is not a yes or no. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. make yeah. sure you do it. Mm -hmm. Right, so yours is harder than ours <coughs> from that perspective. Yeah. Right. right. So we went back to five, um, five B, uh, five B general. Uh, and I actually had another question that came to mind as well. Um, did, did you, has there been any further communication from, um, from that homeowner that was, um, upset about the comms tower? Yeah. Did you, did you reach out to that person at all? No, I not. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll no, no, I'm not saying that you should have, but, um, um, I just don't know how to deal with that. Like, what do we do? You know, it's. A, Sorry, um, actually, let me fill everybody in. Um, so the comms towers are being built. I didn't really give an update on the comms towers, but I don't have mo a more recent one than I would have. Are they the last all done, or are they still? Being no, they were still. There was still a few that were still in process, and some of them are completed. Um, some of them are. Uh, I think the mo majority of them are ninety percent completed, and they need to kind of go do a punch list of things around the areas or whatever. But 
one of the homeowners and I did, I went on a walkthrough with them and it just so happened that that day or like the day prior, um, one of the homeowners was complaining about the, the tower being in his view. And it happens to be one that was already erected and, and you know, it's, it's, it's more than just putting up a tower, it's pouring a pad. It's, it's all, you know, it's, a, it's quite complex. Um, and he, they had already put it up and one homeowner complained about it. So they moved it. Oh, no, and now no, the other no, homeowner is no, complaining no, about no. it. And so um, the, we were, what we wanted to do was uh, figure out how we can address that, right? The first thing he did was complain to the HOA. Um, I didn't even, excuse me, sorry, Doug. I didn't even hear um, about it until I showed up to do the walkthrough. And then one of the PUA gents was like, are you here to talk about that? And I'm like, <laughs> I guess since we're here and here it is, and that's the homeowner's house. And yeah, you better tell me what's going on. But they were really hoping not to have to move it again. Yeah. Obviously, it's thirty. I think he said something twenty five, thirty thousand dollars to move it. Well, plus the next house is just going to complain. Right. Move it anyway. Right. Is it really that unsightly? It's like a, it's less than a, a ham radio antenna, right? Uh, no, it's a triangular tower. I mean, it, it's a yeah, it's similar to a ham radio tower. I'm not actually they're sure. They're just not. It's only, they're what, 25 foot tall? Yeah, it's fairly substantial. I haven't really checked them out, but it's pretty big. Yeah, and the other, the other thing about that. The other problem. <laughs> right, and here's the thing is that, here's the thing is that there's the tree line, and then they're supposed to put up a tower that looks like this in the tree line. But instead of doing that in this particular place, they remove these trees. And so the tower is fully visible from their back porch oh. versus being masked by a bunch of trees. Right. So that, that's the other issue altogether. They would have snuck it behind the trees. It's not behind the trees. It's in place of the trees. Yeah. And they cut down the trees. Uh, did they? Or cut back them significantly. Uh, yeah. I know we did some fire break cleaning and maintenance against that fence line. Is it the one on Nevada? Yeah. It is Nevada, yeah. Yeah, we, um, I'm trying to we think. did the fire break. I think I asked them down. when they when they Nevada backs onto the preserve yeah. there, so it corrects yep. their view. Um, yeah, Nevada. Well, they they had a view of trees in front of our pond. They didn't have a preserve view. Right. Oh, okay. they, right. had, they had a view like the pond backs up to their house, so that there <clears> there was a line of cedar trees that are blocking their view of the pond. Um, and we, I had them clean all of that up when we were doing our fire break maintenance because it was just overgrown and nasty and into the pond. I said, well, I went just... and checked behind my house. They did a really yeah. good job. They cleaned it up. It was yeah. it was thick back there. They really cleaned it up. But on the other, where the tower is, we did some cleaning too. So. Did you take the trees out of the guys' house or did, did the people... We don't have to. I think we'd have to walk down there and specific. We'll have to go see. I think I asked him that and he said know that the the the, the HO or the um the mud did that with regard to our stuff because mm -hmm. all of the branches and stuff were still laying there and that's what we had them do when they did the fire break was just lay the branches right. down instead of hauling them out of there and if the pua would have done it then they would have hauled all that stuff out of there like if they cut down a tree i would expect them to haul it out yeah but we were kind of doing work at the same time so but i know i had our guys clean that fence line up yeah and the fence is a chain link fence. Right. So that's exactly, I'm sorry. Let, yeah. So let's go back and say, yeah, we did talk about that and we decided not to poke a sleeping bear, right? Not to. Yeah. It, it's, well, that is out of compliance. Right. Um, but also, I, I have seen that when I looked at what they, I looked at it before me and it looked like it was a good solution on the original one. You know, we talked about it with the PUA, but it seems like, um, that's why if we all took that out because the fire broke, I was thinking maybe you just plant two more trees in that guy's yard in the back here that's not broken. In their yard? Yeah. And we can't plant anything in the private property. Yeah. Like we could you you could you can do that with the HOA, but um but no the trees that were removed are cedar trees anyway. We can't plant cedar trees, right? Yeah. Cedar trees are an invasive species and we can't replant those yes. anyway. No, we don't yeah. <laughs> right. That's why Nuggets over here sneezing like crazy. <laughs> yeah, but no. So yeah, I do recall us having that conversation now. And yeah. 
in my view, Luna's for, you know, feminists for raising men, that's just the way it might be something else. Yeah, I, I think I recall the um, the, H, the the PUA gent saying, "No, we didn't do that. That's somebody else." Because and, and he pointed to the trees, right? They're they're still laying there, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, well that's what we told them to do with." Yeah, we were, we were doing when they trim the trees is just leave that. it leave it in the preserve. So, okay. okay. Do you um do you have any information on a, a fence on a Adelanto court that is uh you know they have the requirement to have the habitat fence? It's done. It's all finished. Is they it, replaced it. it. Yes, it's okay. okay. All right. Great. Right. <coughs> great. Great. Right. Anything further for the uh, HOA yeah. before we close down? I, I just thought of that. That's why I asked. Awesome. <laughs> uh we need to go back to 8d resident communications what else do we need to put out do we need to mention anything about what those guys said about um riding four wheelers and motor vehicles anything like that do we need to we mention that to the people in, in the yeah that's this is probably our good time for us to address that did we we put up the new signs right mm -hmm. So they're up on all the different paths going down. Yeah, the only ones we still need to do are the ones down at the raw water intake. Those the two. The very bottom. The very bottom of the hill. Do they still have CD players on? As you're You'll start me to lie in. <laughs> no, I think they I didn't. Uh, they probably updated. Those them. were the I only hope. two I didn't get replaced because at the time they were doing the construction, <laughs> they had fences and everything right up against the signs. So I didn't get them. I'll make myself a I'm not going to get nitpicky on this, but and I know you all provide the, the dog stations with the bags. I don't understand the purpose of people people picking up dog poop and then leaving the bag there. I don't think it needs to go in a, in, into the newsletter. In the preserve? Yeah, it happens all the time. This little bag it's because they don't want to carry it out. Well, uh, okay, so guilty. I do that because what? I'm walking there and walking back, and when I'm walking back, I pick it up. Okay, but you pick it up. You don't just like leave it there. Yes, but if you see it during that time, then I'm somebody that you would complain about. No, yeah. Well, that's a different story. All right. No, I don't have, and, I don't and, and like you know, could be situations like mine that they forgot to pick it back up. I wouldn't think anybody would do that on purpose, but I could be wrong. It's more often than you think. It's not that I think you need to put it in there. I think it's a little weird, but. You should <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so communications were the WTC PUA um, thing, the construction mm -hmm. one, and then I guess we got to think with this preserve one, how we do something with that. But the construction one's going next week, right? Or yeah, or well, that, that's the most high priority one because it's the it went into effect on January first, so yeah. we'll get that out. And it'll take us a week or two to get the WTC one ready. So did we have anything to do with? Did we have anything to talk about on trash pickup? I can't remember. On the Christmas trees, we sent that out. I sent it a little late, but we did send it yeah, out. Yeah, but there was about just general trash. Was there something we talked about? I included about? the uh, the bulky right. trash, how to do it, okay. and then what's recycling and what's not. Because um, I've been here, I've lived here three years, and no one's ever clarified what's recycling and what's not. They have like, you obviously kind of know what it should be, but. Do they have a picture on the bin? I can't remember. They, at one point, uh, they probably Some of them do, the they're, ones don't. They're know. old now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with regard to the communication that we had thought we were going to send out about the increase in rates, oh, I probably just should just wait out. another. Yeah, I just took that out. It's part of. Um, should just wait till November next this year, right? 
I took it out. I just didn't want to. I just focused on the Christmas tree. <clears throat> And the only other thing we mentioned, but I guess in the earlier meeting is just to discuss about all the improvements we've made, the LRI improvements, because we have, we've spent a good amount of money and, and done a lot of catch up. Yeah. Um, I think the probably yeah, best avenue for that would be a blurb in the HOA's newsletter. I mean, that, cause I think that's, that's good news. So people can see that we're putting the money back into the. No, and just tell community. people what we're doing. Yeah, I agree. Spoken from somebody who's not on the communications committee. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, we just talked about 10 different communications we need to send out. Any other ones? Okay. So we'll move on from 8D. Uh, we'll move on to number, uh, line item number nine, procurement committee. The RFQ response, um, well, in general, and then uh, discuss and consider RFQ response. Okay. Well, we received a RFQ response from this company called KFM, um, which, according to this bound um, response to our request for qualifications, appears to be quite qualified. They have done a series of public works projects in various um, municipalities uh, ranging in size from Austin, Texas to Salina, Texas, to Alpine, Texas, Stephenville, Texas, Plano, Texas. Um, so they do seem to have a wide variety of um, relevant experience. Yeah, relevant experience. Um, looks like they've done subdivisions. They've worked on Shoal Creek. They've worked on um, multi-use areas. Uh, looks like they did, oh, I forgot about this one there at Miller. Um, so they also have uh, relationships with other, um, anything they can't do, basically they already have, they claim they already have pre-existing relationships with other um, companies. Contractors, subcontractors. Yeah, subcontractors. Um, so, I mean, they're the only one who sent us anything. They appear to be very qualified for what we need. Um, the Nap Pond project is a beginning project, maybe a little small for them, um, but I guess that's something that we can work out with them. Um, well, well, in the long run, they're definitely going to have to work with that threshold of, of money, right? That threshold of funding, because we're not going to there's not going to be tons of projects that are million dollar projects that we're going to really give them, right? Correct. They're going to be more along the lines of 25 to 75. Say, don't we need them to design anything over 25 yeah. grand? Yeah. yeah. So I guess that's a question that we can ask them is that, you know, if we gave you 10, $25,000 projects, is that going to make you happy? Is, is, is the relationship still worth it for you mm -hmm. versus them, you know, giving them that first one for 25,000 and then thinking, and us thinking there are going to be nine other ones for 25000 and them thinking there's going to be nine for $1 million each. Right. And then that might weigh on their decision. But yeah, I mean, they're, I don't know how many <clears throat> full-service architect, um, landscape architecture companies or concerns that there would be that where their primary source of income is $25,000 project. Um, you mean so, not a lot, not many? No, I, I don't think there are many that solely do $25,000 civil projects. Um, there may be companies that do it like, you know, for private parties. Um, um, yeah, so, but while we're, <clears throat> we're not ha actually, all we're asking from them is the architectural plans. Okay. Right, and so the architectural plans certainly aren't going to cost $25,000. But the, the scope of the business, the scope of the business that we'd be giving them would be well, twenty five to fifty to seventy five thousand dollars, perhaps under, even a you know five million dollar wall or whatever. Well, right. Um, my understanding of what we put into the RFQ is that we were wanting a company that not only could do plans but could either perform the work that would be represented in the plans or mm -hmm. be able to bid out the work, basically. Bid it out. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, be able to be project managers at the very least, right. um, based upon the plans that they create. Right. Um, and it does look like they have, like I said, working relationships with other uh, concerns that can, to whom they can contract out mm -hmm. various work. 
Um, <clears throat> I don't know if y'all, we only got this one copy, and of course it's bound. We have, two. we have two. I took one and reviewed it. Okay, you took one and yeah. reviewed it. Mm -hmm. um, what was your opinion of it? Uh, they very similar to you. They, they look very qualified. Um, I didn't get a, a feeling for whether they would be happy with a, you know, that that dollar threshold amount. But correct. Well, it's also not what if we were to go with this a company like this. We're not married to them. We can have them do one project, and if we if we don't like how it goes or it's too expensive when, in the long run or whatever the case is, we can. We can go through this process again. All right. It's in the first project, like seventy-five thousand or something. We ballparked. No, that, that it was it was just over twenty-five thousand. Oh, was it just over? Yeah, oh, it wasn't. I it was bigger. Yeah. Then one, we were also looking at doing this median the same way we did the first section. The seventy-five thousand. That one was going to yeah. be seventy-five thousand. Oh, that's where I got. Okay, anyway. Got yeah, but we diverted from that. We, we've redone the median in other materials and whatever. So. So, but, but it can add up. And of course, a lot of these projects in here, I mean, your Shoal Creek project, that's sort of a, a showcase project, right? Not everything they do in here is like that. You see, look here, we have what they did in Salina, Texas, and that's basically an amenity center. Mm -hmm. So that would be more along the line. That's more what we would Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's worth discussion with yeah. them. And if they're not interested, they can take it, let us know. Yeah. So um, I, I don't think we need a motion or anything, do we? To, uh, Are you going to accept that? Yeah, if, if we're going to like accept and... their... Um, well, it's, it's inter-negotiations, right? Yeah. Right, but we have to discussion. be authorized to enter into negotiations with them. You have to, oh, okay. you have to motion, motion to accept this. Right. After that, then, then we can enter into negotiations and yeah. talk the price. Yeah. 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 So I'm, good. I, I'm okay. fine with that. Yeah. Then I move that we accept this... Um, packet of qualifications from KFM and that we are authorized to enter into contract negotiations to with the, well, let's just say the contract negotiations and then we'll go from there. Contract negotiation, or just discussions. So it's not quite so. Well, <clears throat> we're not authorized to sign a contract, but you would not be authorizing me to sign a contract at this time, but to begin engaging in Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Discussions. discussions and negotiations, yeah. 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 Um, they, I, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of negotiation. We say we have this project, and they say, okay, cool, this is how much it's going to cost. I don't think there's a whole lot of yeah, back and forth. But, um, Not like you have to do an MOE or anything like that. Correct. Well, maybe. But at any rate, okay, so I, I move that we accept this and uh, authorize um, myself. Procurement committee. Yeah, procurement committee to um, engage in contract negotiations with KFM engineering and design. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion, questions, concerns? Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent, thank you. Okay. Then Terry, we need to get together too. Yeah, it's yeah. mostly landscaping projects with, with, that, are, that are over $25,000 estimate. So once we hit the $25,000 threshold, we have to have um, uh, three bids and we have to have, th those bids have to be apples to apples or, or it behooves us to make them apples to apples. So we, um, for example, the Napa, Napa Pond, right? Well, the, or for example, the fence. We would have the to fence have an is an enormous example, right. For them to bid on. Right. Like, right. And, the ACC committee for <coughs> for what kind of projects? Yes, but they're homeowners association members. The MUD's not homeowners association. Although, if, so if any, I do, if I any do, public property, we wouldn't have to go through the ACC. Any any MUD owned property, we, we we're not subject to the ACC's bylaws. But at any rate, one thing we did put into the RFQ was pointed out that we do have certain architectural features in the neighborhood that they need to, their design consistent. to consistently yeah, fit in with the consistent design in the neighborhood, the requirements of the neighborhood. I think I may have actually put in the RFQ comply with HOA um, regulations, so. And obviously, but, they, but that, yeah, that's just a solicitation for an RFQ. That's just an RFQ. Right. It's not necessarily a contract negotiation. Right. But yeah. it, it, what it says, though, is that if they are responding to this 
request for qualifications that they're qualified to be able to do that. So, and I'm and looking willing through, to do that. Yeah, right. And lo looking through this, of course, since they've done things in subdivisions before, I think they have familiarity with that. Yeah, I'm sure. So, I don't know. If, I, I think that Terry's right. We don't have to go in front of the ACC, but I think that they are very capable of working within um, architectural standards, even if it's not well. If there's anything that's borderline needs to be approved by the ACC, then we'll ask right. them to do that. Right. But I don't think there's any. I can't think of anything that. Would... Right. Okay. Um, so we did. We did have a motion and a vote. Mm -hmm. Got that. Moving on from procurement committee. Anything else, Jason? Nothing right now. Recreational dock committee. Wait, I'm sorry, Mr. President. I saw that we there was a, a motion. I didn't. Oh, was David seconded. David. Okay. And did we vote? I didn't hear the mm -hmm. vote. I didn't hear. Yeah, the vote. no, we voted. Yeah. Well, we can do it again. Uh, okay. okay. When Jody gets back, we'll take the vote. Can we talk about the recreational dock and take maybe 30 seconds? Well, uh, yeah, if you and you and Jody are on the same page. Yeah, we are. He, um, he doesn't need to hear it. Go ahead. No, essentially not much has happened since our last meeting because of the holidays, but my last um, conversation with, with uh, Aqua Permits was on 1220. And with that conversation, I gave them our status on the, the approval of moving forward and so they were going to, to go forward to the city of Austin to um, amend the, amend the permit. amendment, right? And they, they expected there not to be any pushback. Do we have any time, any kind of idea about the time frame for that? Like, a, like how long they think that will take? They think it's going to be pretty, pretty quick. So should we start soliciting bids? Uh, I wouldn't yet. I, I, I hate to. I, I think we're fine. Yeah, but you're gonna are you gonna try to have it in there for the summer? Mm, by yeah. So you, have you kind of mapped it all out and mm -hmm. you have the time to do that? Yeah. Um, and what's the what's and I've got the, uh, I've got uh, names of, of dot builders too that I can contact. But you my, could or you have been? Yeah, no, I do have them. I have some. No, no, no. Them. You you could contact them or you have contacted them. I have not. I've, I've talked to two. But okay. um, I know I've talked to at least two others. Okay. But it was really difficult because I didn't have solidified plans at that time. But you have them now, right? I do. Yeah, so is there any reason why we shouldn't start that conversation with them? Because the reason why I'm asking that is because there's going to be, be time limitations to <clears throat> the, RF, the RFP. Right, right. You know, we're going to have to post it. They're going to have to post it. Advertise it's, it's, so it's big enough that it's got to be, yeah, advertise it. Yeah. And and I I'm I, I'm afraid you're underestimating the okay. runway that you're going to need to get here yeah and to get there by the you know first of the first of summer or whenever whenever you're thinking about doing that yeah I mean one of the, the tall tent items was the tent poles was electrical power and I think that we in my discussions right here is that we may be able to use solar instead and so that that takes out one of the, the timing aspects but. Um, I, I, the the, the red tape is the timing aspects that you need probably need to worry more about than the right. So, David, are you planning on having it built by the summer or beginning construction by the summer? Having it in place is what I'd like to have it in place. Um, they don't think it's going to take that long to put it in place, but once it gets started, because they're going to do it from the water side, not by hauling down materials. So, how, how long do they think it'll take to get built? A couple months. Month and a half, something like that, maybe. I mean, it didn't. I know when I had mine built, it didn't take long at all. Yeah, they just float everything in. Mm -hmm. They float everything in. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind, take a look at like maybe maybe uh, select an arbitrary date in your mind, June first, July first, whatever whatever your date is, and then kind of work your way backwards. Work with uh, Carlton to understand the 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 line the requirements for time the time bound requirements. Okay. And I would say you probably want to touch base with. Two or three or four of those contractors PDQ. and get them ready to bid because you're also going to have to put together the RFP, right? 
Mm -hmm. So the RFPs, assuming you're starting from scratch, that may take a month for you to put together an RFP, right? So again, yeah. it, it all builds out and you want to try to back your way into it, see when you should, when you should be starting. Okay. Because yeah, that's not, that's going to be. Actually, we have to come back to session. Our, 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 did, our, our deadline know. was, I thought it was sometime in August. August, our permit expires August. Okay, well. But honestly, so does that mean we have to have construction completed by the time our permit expires? But I think. Or honestly, started. If you go back and look at it, I think it's August of next year. Oh. Is it? Is it 25? So that would be I'll great if it is. That's then then he, then he kind of blows that out of your mind. Kind of mind it does, but that doesn't mean I should just sit on my laurels. No, I think, no, I no, I, get it done. I think you should set yourself a personal goal to get it in by you know July first yeah. or June first or whenever you want to do it. But that that's going to stink if it goes over. And so in the hottest part of the summer, when you're wanting to actually go down to the dock yep. and jump into the water, and yep. I'd say as soon as possible. It. Yeah. So, okay. but but we may. We may really want to consider if we can't have if we because they say okay I can do this in two months. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna take three. Right. I mean, very well could. So then all of a sudden you may lose your whole summer. Right. With them building the swim dock, so we may really uh, yeah. well the old the old dock's still gonna be there, is it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's only gonna be there till they start construction though. They're gonna remove it. Out. Then they're going to remove it. Well, they take it out so they can put it in the new one. It's not going to the same spot. spot. It's moved over a bit. Oh. Is it moved over enough that they could leave the old one there the entire time? I think, I think so. so. Oh, well, it was in the original one. I don't know. If let's, uh, yeah, let's, yeah, just let's just get to the bottom of that. Out. And then maybe that's a moot point. But I definitely see your point is that, but also we're going to, he's going to have to bring this back to us to approve it in right. stages. Right. And so if we, if we're not approving it until June, we're certainly not going to approve them to start work in June 1st. Right. Right. If it's going to be encumbering us using our current dock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that may be one of the biggest considerations to ensure that is to ensure that during dock season we don't deprive the community of the use of the dock. Yeah, yeah. expiry date 831 25. 25. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's so that's, that's out of our mind. Right for, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's out of our mind if we're so far. But I just yeah, think we still, like you said, get it done this summer. Or yeah, I was, summer. it'd be great to, although we can use our dock. I mean, we mm -hmm. used the dock last month, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can use it pretty deep in the you year. Did? Mm-hmm. We did like, a polar, polar bear plunge. Oh, you did do a plunge. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to get rid of that? We don't have any plans to get rid of it. We've talked about it in meetings and whatnot, but it's not even, there's no roof anymore, right? It's just, no, it's just colors. pillars. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What's the point? Yeah. It's, that's it's the ruins of a great society, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, would you suggest we go the other direction and rebuild it? We haven't discussed Is that it. what it was? It had a roof and it was. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a boy scout. And there was a cool, yeah, say, and there was a cool rope a swing. Scout. Yeah, there was a cool rope swing. <laughs> yeah, it used to have a six by six cedar arbor. It went all over, and then when it rotted, I pulled it all out. Yeah. I left the I, we can look at the, We can look at redoing that. Yeah, it wouldn't cost that much of a roof on that. Would you want to include that with a dock builder to have them do it? Or I don't just think slow that. I don't think slow it down. Yeah. I think go full it's board towards a new, a new, new dock. And yeah, this is that's that's a separate piece of much smaller work. Yeah, he put it, he turned it into the city of Austin. Or that's what Aqua, mm -hmm. Aqua permits is turning into the city of Austin. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's it's huge news. But the other thing is, initially, we were going to build the the proposal was to have sixteen um, boat slips. We're not doing that. Do what? Yeah, uh, there was a few. A that, lot of yeah. people wanted. There, there were two, people three people that wanted it, and, and so, everybody would thought they were going to get in the lottery to get it. Exactly. Right? Yeah, but it would have been literally been a lottery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there will be no parking. <laughs> right. There's no parking. Yeah. Gonna have to walk down the hill. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think. I think. I think like uh, yeah. I think we'll, we'll probably put something out. I mean, we've talked about a lot of communications going out, but we'll probably put something out when we have more concrete dates and. That's great. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I still have the electricians working on the permit for electric just in case. Just in case. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah that, that was kind of one of my bees in my bonnet. I wanted to make sure that that permit did not just go and spoil. Yeah. That's just the permit, right? That's just mm -hmm. assuming they, they, the permit breezes through and there's no uh, yeah. pushback from the city on the permit. Yeah, I mean, he said if you're shrinking it like you're talking about and you're taking away the complexity, it's just going to be a swim guy. There's not much of a like, conversation there. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything further on the dock before we move on? Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it correct that the that the uh, budget for this is a hundred k? So we carved out a hundred k. Yeah, we ca carved out a hundred k to be spent, but that's okay. not going to be the total cost. Okay, because if you're under one hundred and fifty, if you're between twenty five and one hundred and fifty, you just have to solicit for three bids, which is different than having to actually advertise. It's that's Wait, the, that's the time. Hold on, I thought it was seventy five thousand. Twenty-five to seventy-five thousand, and then over seventy-five thousand, they have to. Um, they maybe they amended chapter forty-nine because chapter oh. forty-nine two seventy-three says for contracts over twenty-five thousand, but not more than one hundred fifty thousand, the board shall solicit written competitive bids on uniform written specifications from at least three bidders. If contracts over twenty-five thousand, the board is not required to advertise or seek competitive bids if you're under not under 25, 20, 25 or under. Right. Um, and so it, the threshold's 25 to 150. Oh, they must have changed that and updated it. We initially yeah. recently approved 100 because we thought we were going to have to spend a good bit of money to get uh, electricity down there. Mm -hmm. We wanted to have that kind of as prep work. I think the estimate on electricity is what, 60 to 70, mm -hmm. plus a little bit of other stuff was where the 100 yeah. Right. Out. So for Architect total forward. projects under 150, you don't have to advertise. But if you think the total project's going to be over 150, you, you, but like we don't have any way of knowing that, right? Good night. Thank you, Pat. Good night. Good night. Yeah. You just you run into you might as well go through the full meal deal right, if you right. think you're going to get close and do the advertising, which is the time time constraint. That's the time suck for you, because um, it's it's everything. It's the aggregate. You can't piecemeal it. That's where you get in trouble. So why don't I just talk to you, uh, you know, offline and not yeah. take up more of my time here for that? Sure. Not, yeah. And I can set out a time frame. Yeah. Awesome. And kind of what needs to be in the. Uh, yeah, we can help you with that. Okay. Excellent. Anything else about the doc before we move on? Okay. Um, Mr. President, did you 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 never got your vote? Oh. <laughs> on um. Uh, nine. nine. Did we vote for that? The pro oh yes, the pro you're right. We were going back. Did we vote yes. for? We'll just redo it. We'll just redo it for the for formality's sake. It's not going to hurt anything if we do it twice, right? Correct. <laughs> so <laughs> let's recall what we said. Um, so we have a motion on the floor to approve. What is it KFG? KFM. Um, KFM. Yeah. To uh, we have a motion on the floor to. Um, Accept the RFQ for Accept KFM. Accept the RFQ for KFM and allow the procurement subcommittee to enter into negotiations with them. Yes. And I believe that's been seconded, but if it has not already, I second. Yes. David I second. seconded. David seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Formal. Thank you. Sure. Uh, okay. So um, moving on from uh, that was reopening uh, nine. Move, move on from nine up to 11. Receive general counsel report. So there was something I asked you to remind me of. So um, I had I have notes and things on. Uh, you asked about um, the process for replacing a members. director. A director. Directors. That's right. Yeah. Um, and so there's kind of two aspects of that. One I can talk about is for your board itself, for the board itself. Uh, if you have a vacancy on the board itself, that's all regulated um, under Chapter 49. Your vacancies, you have um, 60 days to fill your vacancy by appointment. 
um, historically what you've done, and Mr. Lewis knows about this, there, there was an application process. <coughs> uh, so you solicited, there was an application on the website, you got that, you evaluated, and then you went through the appointment process. So um, that's, that's a pretty good model to follow um, if you end up with a vacancy on um, this board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the time bound aspect is 60 days. Yeah, so, so what, the, what the water code says is it says it, if the board hadn't filled it by the 61st day after the date the vacancy occurs, a petition signed by more than 10% of the registered voters in the district requesting the board to fill the vacancy by appointment can be presented. So there's not a penalty, right? Um, but once you get to the 90th day, because you're under Chapter 49 and you're subject to uh, the uh, TCEQ rules, the commission can fill it. Oh, TCEQ. but would they know? Yeah, after the 90th day. Yeah. How so would they know? Do we have? Do they have? We have do notice we have requirements for this. Say that again. Do we have notice requirements? <laughs> but it's still the same thing. TCEQ would have to appoint somebody that's in Lake Point. That a yes. Lake Point resident, and they, if we don't have any volunteers, we still don't have any volunteers for them exactly. to appoint. They, yeah. they, if I'm not mistaken, they can appoint an attorney, uh, your attorney. Oh, yes. You want to be on the board? <laughs> <laughs> it's a volunteer position. <laughs> it's <laughs> not a volunteer position. I would position. highly recommend Major pay that. Cut. <laughs> yeah. we, we ran into that in another board several years ago <clears> where <throat> there were nobody wanting to be the board president. Attorney's like, you can't appoint me to be your president. Really? Until you all find somebody. Wow. And then somebody finally stepped up and said, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. So I got I, I, feelers out for folks in the neighborhood that might like to, if, if a board position does open up, might like to do that. But in reality, if that should happen, um, sorry, are you trying so, to stop me? So one of the things that you want to consider is if you're going to consider going out for bonds, you want to fill that spot because that will hold you up that that can be a problem mm -hmm. and that's specifically called out in in this section of the water code so um if you end up with a vacancy on this board find your friends find your neighbor somebody um that would be a good person to to serve in that capacity because it, it'll that affect that your ability to um, do bonds do you think we need to look for a specific skill set like an engineer or i don't think we're allowed to are we we're not you, allowed you to don't have yeah it's not in your bylaws it's not in your um anything related you i mean you want to look for somebody who's going to be able to serve who's going to be able to <clears throat> to fill the qualification the oath of office right, right? oh they have um, to make it through the process like you, there is a uh, you you have done it most recently there is a process <coughs> that they have to mm -hmm. uh, carlton has to like Make sure you're eligible. And yeah, that kind of thing. the eligibility requirements to serve, um, and that's it. And that's basically state law um, requirements over 18. Um, no, felonies. no felonies. There's a list of about five requirements, but other than that, there, there's not anything specific. No felonies. Just, but how did I get on this board? <laughs> I don't know how I did. Did, they make you, did they make me sign an ethics statement? Oh yeah, I think we so, signed one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I already do it with another organization. So. Okay, but I'm just so just um, for realistic uh, purposes. I mean, it may not be required, but don't you think we should be looking for somebody with a certain skill set? I mean, well, uh, you as a director have a vote to appoint them, right? So if you're okay. interested in a specific skill set, then yes, that doesn't necessarily mean ever all directors have to agree that it needs to be an engineer. If that's the criteria that you come up with, yeah, right. I'm just. Yeah, but if, if we're but you, you're you're one years. one vote of four to a point, and if you don't, if you want an engineer and somebody's presented that's not an engineer, by all means. But but if I ask you, I said, if, you know, what would you who would you like to, what kind of skill set would you like to see brought to the board? I mean, medical doctor, uh, someone who's a teacher, someone. I'm just making things up, but yeah. to me, it, you don't you want something more than just a warm body. <clears throat> Yeah, I agree. In a perfect world, yes. Yeah. yeah. In a perfect world, we'd have five <laughs> candidates and we'd choose the best one. In this particular yeah. case, we may have one candidate and not have a choice. Yeah. So I guess we'll see who applies. Right. And then go from there. So yeah. So if there should become a vacancy on the board, um, then we from the date that the vacancy occurs, we have 60 days to appoint someone. Um, it might be a good idea for 
all of the directors individually to talk to your neighbors, think about who you associate with on a regular basis that you think would be a good fit for the position, uh, put the feelers out essentially. Um, I would suggest or, or recommend that we um, inform them as much of detailed information as possible about the new way that we're doing things with regard to subcommittees and the expectation of uh, participation outside of just a three hour meeting um, and that everybody kind of is playing a, playing a part, playing a role um, and that we're all collaborating. And, and as a result, I think we're getting a lot more done <laughs> um, than what we have in, in the past. But mm -hmm. um, as much of that type of um, also, nothing wrong with discussing director's fees and that it's not a volunteer position and that this is actually, you know, you're entitled to per diem director's fees. And so that maybe entices someone, I don't know. So. Okay. okay. Did you want to talk about the uh, directors for WCT, WTCPUA and their replacement? I look at the information. It's yeah, all if you have it. information, for sure. Yeah, because yeah. well, that's going to be the next question that you get asked offline. So you might as well help us yep. all out. With it. Sure. So um, uh, for that particular board, because it was created under the local government code, Chapter 572, uh, it points to some specific, um, there, there's some specific language in that section. Um, it is not, uh, and then in the creation documents, uh, the director's positions um, are all defined in the concurrent uh, ordinance that helped that was part of the creation of the WTC PUA. Um, you you as a body that have um, are are one of the members or the founding members, y'all have a vote. It's your opportunity or your sole discretion on whether or not you who you want who you appoint and you can remove them um now i did have not looked to see if they added members because the original the concurrent uh ordinance set up the a number of original board number of board of directors that allowed for uh initially three places one for each it seems like there are five now. There are, yeah. So, um, so there were the additional two. The city of BK for the points one uh, that we need to approve, and then the city, and then uh, Travis uh, Hayes County Hayes also County. points one that we need to approve. That's the additional two. Yeah. So the two additional directors shall reside in Hayes County. Um, so because they're they're appointed by place, they serve a, a particular place. Right. Um, place four shall reside in Hayes County and be recommended by the county. The second of the two additional directors, place five, shall reside in Travis County and be recommended by the city. So those are the only requirements. Okay. That's that's the base requirement. So you you would need to find somebody who resides in Travis County. Jason was right. Yeah, yeah, just anywhere in Travis County. It doesn't necessarily have to be a PUA's uh, right. service area. Is there that's even correct. like an age requirement or residential or voter or you not have to a be able to be able to be sworn in to take the oath of office. Okay. So eight over eighteen, you know, you're not convicted of a felony. Those think about the Boy Scout. <laughs> I was thinking about my daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and yeah, and I know you're joking, but the fact is, is that one I think that we probably should hone in on yeah. a specific skill set that we want. You know, availability being the first of them. <laughs> um, but I see, I see that being that as being a much more pointed. Um, appointment than a well-rounded person that we could you know have on our board well with the wtcpua i think most of the board members right now they either work for the respective governments which they represent or mm -hmm. they're developers mm -hmm. so it might be nice to break that up a little bit with someone who's more professionally oriented but President, I don't know that you announced that we went into executive session. We didn't. We're not we haven't gotten it yet. We haven't really do you listened. want to do that? We do. I think we should this. go into that exactly. after this. Nothing that you've said. Okay. Is... Right. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't know where. I think Nothing we're, yet. I think we're on the I just want to make sure we don't yes. go there. No, we're not. We're not there yet. We're not in executive session yet. So 
one last question then on, well, related to the bond. Mm -hmm. You mentioned like being short a director would hold us up. I do think if we don't get this MUD 3, MUD 5 sorted, that's going to hold us up as well. Whether or not we're Lake Point or we're MUD 3 or we're MUD 5, because getting a bond approved for two different MUDs, I imagine, is much more complicated than one. Yeah. Um, so to that end, what do we need to task you with as far as paperwork with Travis County? With So we've been Lake Point for six Five years, six five years. years. And what we've been told is we couldn't get rid of mud three and mud five till the debt was retired. That's right. We retired the debt this summer. So we have no more constraints. Now we didn't merge everything with Travis County because we didn't want to move the bank account and all that before mm -hmm. they paid us our tax money. But I don't think there's any reason we can't be Lake Point Mud everywhere as of today, except for the bureaucracy of getting it updated everywhere. So to that end, I don't know what we need to do or where we need to do it, but Maybe you guys can help us ensure that's done because yeah. I, I don't think we want to go out to get this bond in August and September and find out they won't give it to us because we're we're still listed as two different entities. Yeah, so that one of the when you were talking about that earlier, I made a note to okay. um, circle back with Kelly to make sure that whatever paperwork we need to do with um, to indicate. I, I don't know how your property, all of your property, is. Title, you know whether Wait, it's, yeah, the, the forms the County. say Lake Point Mud doing business as Mud Three DBA and okay. Mud Five DBA. Okay, so it says a DBA. So we we'll want to make sure that everything gets updated. Whether um, in TCAD, it, TCAD's a little different because they don't really care. They want to make sure that you, you know, the taxes are paid and how the assessments happen. Um, there's likely a form that we need to have filled out, and you'll have a. a someone will need to sign off we can pull that together so i'll talk with kelly here probably not tomorrow but next week to make sure that we have all the boxes checked because i don't think this is the first time that we've done this okay. and and so likely we have a checklist of all of the places where we need to uh, tie up every loose end because mm -hmm. i know that that was one of the things in discussion in office it's coming the the debt's being paid off now it can be all combined yeah, right. Um, and but that was before we knew we were going to do the bond. So now, or thinking we're going to do the bond, this yeah, becomes now a lot it's bigger becomes, priority. Becomes than, a little bit more than maybe it was before. Yeah, and there's some timing associated if you're going to do the bond. To, had did and Kelly and I did not discuss whether or not y'all. She had a discussion with you about the timing for doing bonds, doing a bond election in November. We haven't done any of that stuff. Okay. Yeah, we haven't. we need to. So we need to get you kind of a timeline for how that works out and, and all the steps, so mm -hmm. I can put that information together for you, so that y'all have that, because uh, there are quite a few steps in the process, um, it, specifically in relation to the you know going out and doing a bond election. Um, you know, you had mentioned earlier trying to uh, get some feedback from the public uh, about the wall and and. Um, there are some specific limitations that and things that you want to be careful. So I was happy to hear that you were a little concerned about uh, doing a straw poll. Straw poll. Um, there is some information that you will need to put out to the public if you're going to do a bond election, um, and some limitations on what you can say. You cannot. Right. Uh, um, advocate for or against it yeah. you can only put out factual information yeah. yeah so we'll help you know if we get to that if you decide that that's the direction you actually want to go then we'll work with you on that but i want you to have the timeline first because that'll be the critical thing so you'll know what to do when because there are several steps involved right um would the timeline be similar to anything you're putting on the ballot to July and August. There are some additional steps oh, for bond yeah, elections for bonds, that yeah. are uh, that you need to be cognizant of. It follows most of your regular election related deadlines, but then there are some there's additional more. things. Um, most of those start in July, right? Like yeah, that's what I was thinking. That, yeah. That's, that's you why you have I asked. time, but you don't it's want to go a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, in your estimation, if we could get through it between now and then, but we don't have a lot of time to waste. Yeah, if we, we need to get. Get everything cleaned up, um, I would say by March, uh, so that you are primed and ready to go with all of the messaging and the information, and then you're all you can put your steps together. 
we can have the right, all of the proper dates calendared for your bond election steps. Um, do we need to, this evening, do we need to appoint to the directors to a subcommittee, wall subcommittee, so that they can start to have these conversations with you and because um, the next time we'll be in the same room together is not for, it's for another month, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so one of the things, you know, if you want to do that, happy, you know, certainly you, sh you can. It's not really on your agenda. <laughs> right. Um, and so I, let me do this. Let me um, pull together all the information, the steps that you're going to need to do to make sure that um, your entities are all combined so that it's all one Lake, Lake Point Mud. And then also the calendar, and we'll send that out so you have the information so that it's your next meeting in February. Uh, if there's something that needs to happen, you'll know ahead of time what uh, what you need to, what decisions you'll need to make. Yeah. So in other words, you're going to bring us all online by disseminating information to all of us, and then mm -hmm. in the next session, we'll be able to say, okay, who has the time and bandwidth to be on this subcommittee? That's right. And appoint someone next. That's time. right. That way, you'll know. Uh, ahead of time what that subcommittee works going to look like yeah yeah for sure mm -hmm. okay that works for sure and i don't know who's going to have the bandwidth to do that <laughs> it's not too bad <clears throat> yeah. a lot of it's a lot of it will be done through our office but oh, okay. the communicate communications um if you if there's there's some work in that regard because you got you got both the financing aspect and the actual architectural yeah. and building aspect, the man, you know, project management. Mm -hmm. but it, yeah, and we could even do a, a two different subcommittees, mm -hmm. right? We could do one that's dealing with one of that one of those avenues, and the other one that's dealing with the other of the avenues. Mm -hmm. Oof! Caught the Pink Floyd committee. Uh, and then I think we also, <laughs> and then I think in addition to that, we shouldn't. If there is a great deal of work, we shouldn't uh, take it all upon ourselves. We'll ask Carlton to do a bit of it, and that's obviously going to cost. We'll get, uh, if we need to get volunteers to be on a dock committee, similar to the preserve, friends of the preserve, et cetera, folks that may have an interest in building a dock and they can participate and take on some of the laborious stuff. The like work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think there is going to be some discussions and thought put into the financing of this wall, too. I mean, it's not a, we kind of toyed, you know, toyed around a little bit with some different financing alternatives. So it's, it's not a dead set that it's a bond, but those are some of the things that we need to kind of put our, our Do we need on. to ask council about the debt, like taking on debt without bond? Uh, that is that executive that session topic no, or does that is that open uh -huh. <clears throat> so if you know i think that's probably something that we'd want to i'd want to be more prepared to kind of give you a full layout of the pros and cons um and the um do you have a specific financial advisor for that y'all dealt with that you had assigned when you had the bonds previously because you'll need to have somebody. Yes, I mean, I've, I've, I've already put in an email to um, a friend of mine who's the president of Samco. He's one of the biggest, they one of the biggest muni issuers in the state. <coughs> and I've known, I've known them for a long time. So just a general conversation of, you know, minimum issue sizes and, and call uh, provisions. Uh, can you refinance, you know, maybe yeah. if we decide to do it with, with bank debt and then turn around and refinance it, can you do that? Is that a, uh, availability? To do that, um, that those sorts of things. Not not to mention timing of of issuance to take advantage of uh, uh, bond yields, mini bond yields, mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah, someone who definitely want to have somebody who's familiar with with public financing um, to advise you on that. That is not my area of expertise. I mean, I, I've I've spent twenty something years on the buy side of, of the meeting business, but not so much on the issuance. Issuance, yeah. There are specific firms um, that I've worked with over the last 10 years that specifically do uh, bond issuances for municipalities and mm -hmm. other public utilities, so. Yeah, there's, there's really, 
a big handful of the major yeah. guys. <laughs> a handful is a really good way to describe it. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, we can, I mean, we can give you recommendations of, of firms that we've worked with very successfully. Mm -hmm. um, and you can interview and see who you, who you would want to work with. Now, is that um, something that we'd have to, to go down the path of notices and, and getting uh, bids and so forth? Because it's, no. not, it's not an expenditure necessarily, but. Yeah. Well, it's a professional services. Professional services, yeah. <clears throat> Agreement. So you don't have to do that. Whew. Financing my eyes glaze, glaze over, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, and I mean, it, you know, if, if bonds are expertise. the direction you're going to go, there are a lot of steps in place, and there are specific counsel that advise on that and, and will walk you through the minutia as much as you want to know. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, all, all Pink Kelly to see if we can include in, in that email, maybe some of the things to include in your discussion for your next meeting about uh, possible firms that would help, one, with the general discussion, and then two, that, you know, you can kind of put your eyeballs on because you clearly have a little more experience than a lot of the cities and the folks at cities that I've worked with um, on the financing side. You know, they'll have their finance director, but when it comes to dealing with bonds, they leave it all to bond counsel hmm. um, because that level of detail and issuance of those and the timing and they will, there is a specific schedule that we, that you'll have to walk through. Um, and so uh, it can take six, eight months to get to the issuance process, but you, we've got to get through the first part where you make a decision on what what avenue do you want to take? What's going to be the most beneficial for you uh, financially if you're able to, um, you know, I don't know what the bond market looks like for municipal bonds or for government bonds. In Texas, it's the, one of the best. I mean, the economy would, <laughs> would give you that. Yeah. We've got great selection and, and great quality. So, um, I know interest rates have gone up, though, over the last few years because, you know, couple of years ago when I was working with the city, you know, you were getting really, really low rates mm -hmm. and, and they've slowly uh, creeped up. And so depending on what side of that coin you're on, it's good or bad. So you just have to be ready for that. Yeah. Um, but we'll get you some information so that you can consider it at okay. your next meeting. And that way you can kind of have a, we'll have a broader discussion of kind of all of the pieces. One, getting all of your information compiled together getting Lake Point as one entity in all of the places you need to be getting information on, you know, walking through the project and then the financing aspect of it. Okay. Anything else for item 11? Um, the, uh, I had, I don't, Unless you want to go into executive session about any particular items, I didn't have any additional items for the report. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we are going to go into executive session. I just want to make sure anything else that needs to be public is discussed. And yeah, nothing else for the general. Okay. Anything else for Aaron before we move on? Okay, so we'll move on to uh, move from number eleven. Um, we are going to go into executive session to discuss. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to leave anything out. But we're definitely going to go to an executive session to discuss five B two the soccer fence project. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we noted that we need to discuss that I should get on um, the record? The WTC PUA um, representative. Well, not not this is the representative, but kind of a bigger picture. I need to get some feedback from you guys. Oh, okay. Talk about Can I say project? in general, we're going into executive session to to discuss line item number five. Yes. In general. Yes. Okay. I have a budget one too. Session, so okay. call it. So um, uh, line item number five and line item number six. Yeah. Okay. Anything else I need to say before we go into executive session? Call the time. Okay. We'll go into executive session.
two minutes or whatever, or are you yeah. good? Okay, um, so we are coming back out of uh, executive session under section 551.073. 71, advice of council. 071, mm -hmm. advice of council, that we took no action during uh, executive session. The time is? The time right now is 10.15. Uh, we good? Okay, uh, I, I motion that we adjourn. I second that. Any, any uh, discussion? Nope. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. 10-16. 10-16.